It is a beautiful day for baseball here in Glendale, Arizona. Dodgers and Padres for the first time this spring in Cactus League action. Two weeks from tomorrow, these two teams will meet up on opening day in San Diego. We say welcome inside with Oral and Nomar. I'm Joe Davis, and Alana Rizzo joins us in just a moment. Oral, the Dodgers last year had 16 different starting pitchers. That was the most in baseball, and one of those guys we'll see today, Mike Bolsinger. Yeah, Mike Bolsinger really came and rescued this rotation. Out of spring training, didn't make the team, and the first half was solid, but where he really shined was his first seven. He was 4-1 and one with a 2.08, and that was a rotation that had already lost Ryu, and then two days later, Later, after he started, they lost Brandon McCarthy. And both of those guys, still oral, are out. And then Nomar, Brett Anderson goes down with a back injury. Three to five months, he's out. So suddenly that five spot in the rotation opens up again. And Mike Bolsinger making a case to fill it. And this will be his second start this spring. He has worked some uh, some of these games out of the bullpen. But this is an important start for him because you are just two weeks away. He's battling for that start last year. He didn't make it out of spring training, and he's looking to change that this year. Zach Lee, Brandon Beachy, the other two guys vying for that fifth spot with just a couple of weeks left in Cactus League action before the Dodgers break camp head down to San Diego for opening day. We've got first pitch of this one on the other side of this break. Padres and Dodgers just about set to get going from Camelback Ranch, but forget everything you've just heard in our open. You've got breaking news, and Alana Rizzo, you've got details. Well, I wanted to tell you all about the fact that Mike Bolsinger threw his curveball 35.1% of the time last year. That's going to have to wait for another time because Mike Bolsinger has just been a late scratch. We were just told by John Chapper in the public relations department that he has been scratched. Instead, it's going to be right-hander Jeremy Kurtz on the hill. Greg Maddox walked by me, and I said, hey, can you give me any sort of scouting report on this young man? Because I don't know too much about him. He says, I'm 
I'm not even really sure. So it's double zero, Jeremy Kurt. They are expecting the game to resume at 110 today, local time, guys. No word yet on why Bolsinger was actually scratched. All right, Alana, and I'm sure details will come out as the day goes on. We welcome you back inside. Nomar and Oral. Um, so we just talk about that five spot, maybe solidifying with Bolsinger. We don't know the reason that he's not starting, but it again, for the time being, reopens that conversation and kind of throws a wrench into things once again. Yeah, we've been watching the, the rotation really take on some difficulties already. Reuse rehab goes backwards a little bit. Brett Anderson has to have the back surgery, so the depth is being tested, and hopefully the Mike Bolsinger scratch is something of a conservative move that it's not a serious injury. Right. And we were also talking about, we were talking about Brandon Beachy after he pitched. He was talking about he felt some forearm tenderness. He was not too concerned, but hopefully that's not an issue. You got Zach Lee as well. Here are the three that you're talking about battling for that fifth spot so this will definitely be interesting as we find out more information as the game goes on yeah we just found out also that zach lee has been optioned to the minor league so that happened uh, just a moment ago but i mean he joins uh, bull singer does if there is some kind of injury and you, know, you never want to guess at what's going on but he's looking at a group already in a starting rotation dealing with these injuries for you and mccarthy came into the season and everybody kind of figured that it would be a while before we saw them Sometime near the All-Star break for McCarthy coming back from the Tommy John surgery for you. That keeps getting pushed back. Brett Anderson, three to five months after the back surgery. So we don't know the details of why Mike Bolsinger won't start. We just know that he won't. And a guy named Jeremy Kurt will, wearing double zero. I can't wait to hear the story of how he got this assignment, where he was when he found out he'd be coming in to make this start. You know, when I broke into the big leagues and the roster that I got, the number they gave me was 55. And then when I actually made the team, they wanted to lower my number because that was a huge number at that time other than Don Drysdale was up there and Steve Howe. But I told him I'm just going to keep it. And I don't know if Jeremy Kurt, if he does really well and makes an impression, gets to the big leagues, he's going to want to keep double zero. But uh, this young man has probably got butterflies and wants to make a big impression. And you can when you're rushed into duty and you're going to face a big league lineup that's got Matt Kemp in it, the Padres, you can show that this is a place that you're not going to melt down. We always say in baseball, there's opportunities that come up and you got to capitalize on those opportunities. Well, for Jeremy Kurt, here's one, like you said, and double zero. Right? Yeah, that, that's you don't see that too often. And before he lets his first one fly, guys, Alana, you've already dug up some more info on well, Jeremy. Well, yeah, guys, Greg Maddox was just telling me that he basically is a sinker ball guy, a changeup guy, has a two seam fastball with a good sink on it and does have the occasional breaking ball. I looked at him and I said, we'll see. <laughs> All right, and we'll see his first pitch only a couple of minutes after we were supposed to. 107, the official first pitch time, and he delivers strike one to John Jay. He was in his first year in a San Diego uniform, came over from the Cardinals. Straight up for Jed Jerko this offseason. Well, one thing we know about Jeremy is he can get ready in a hurry because when we got the news that Mike Bolsinger was scratched, we looked down in the bullpen, and he was still in front of the mound playing catch. Jay deposits a base hit into center to start the day. Leading off this Padres lineup with several new faces, although not as many splashes as going into the season last year when they won the offseason. Spangenberg will bat second. Kemp, former Dodger in the three spot. Myers, Solarte, and Norris in the middle. Alexi Ramirez over from the White Sox. Formerly B.J. Upton, now Melvin Upton Jr. And then Robbie Erlin will make the start of the mound for the Padres today. Second baseman Corey Spangenberg takes ball one. When you look at this San Diego offense, I mean, that's, you know, they changed some things up this year because they also had issues from a defensive standpoint. Yes. When you look in the outfield, you know, they had Justin Upton, Matt Kemp, Will Myers out there in center, and it just wasn't one of the better outfielders in the major league, so they had to make some changes. I think they focus so much on building a lineup with offense as the focus. Out of those spots, the defense was ignored and it showed up. The problem was that they didn't come through with what they were counting on, and that was the offense from those guys. They tried to add more power because we all know that it's not a it's more of a pitcher friendly ballpark It's so big over there at Petco Field. So they were looking to really get some muscle in that lineup 
Spangenberg drills one into right field for a base hit. That's back-to-back -back singles to begin the day for the Padres, but an outfield assist from Puig, and they throw to second late. Yasiel Puig brings this crowd alive with a cannon to third to cut down Jay. What a great throw by Yasiel Puig. He comes in there hustling, getting his body behind it. We all know that strong arm. I mean, this is this is what gets Yasiel excited because he knows he's rec he's looking at the uh, at the runner he's peeking at John Jay and say okay he's going to challenge me and he throws it right on the money one hopper perfect throw. You know, with Yasiel's offense has been in a slump and they're looking for the bat to come back alive. Jock Peterson in center, his bat has slumped in the second half of the year, but both of them can play Gold Glove type left and or right field and center field. And that's what's going to keep them in the lineup and have patience waiting for their offense. So Kurt gets some help from Puig and that defense. And Matt Kemp climbs in. He's gone hot over the last couple of days. Barrels that one up. Kike Hernandez deep in the hole off one bounce. Throws him out. Bellinger back to the bag. Holding it second is Spangenberg to away. Nomar, is that a benefit of getting rid of the ball quick? And yes. You a chance for your first baseman to get back to the bag? That's exactly right. Cody Ballinger does an excellent job here recognizing Matt Kemp not hustling down the line, not running really hard because, you know, as you assume probably spring training, it's an instant out once you see him make that play. But Cody Ballinger coming off the bag, catching it, and going back and tagging it. So a chance for Kurt to pitch around those back-to-back -back singles to start the inning. And yeah, Will Myers comes up. Cleanup man for the Padres today takes ball one. He was one of those splashy moves last offseason. Got him from the Tampa Bay Rays. Former top prospect in all of baseball while he was in Kansas City. But he's dealt with injuries over the last couple of seasons. Trying to stay healthy here in 2016. One and one. Well, Jeremy Kurt was a jick probably coming into the day, which is a just in case probably was shipped over from the minor league side to be here just in case. Well, he got just in case to start the game and I'll bet you there will be more bodies in that Dodger bullpen as the game goes on. There's a phone call going on to the minor league side to say who's still in uniform who can throw. Bullpen full of jicks today <laughs> could be they you know you're going to see you know, Jamie Wright is scheduled, I think, to pitch today for the Dodgers. You might see Luis Avilon out there, Chris Hatcher, Carlos Frias. Those are the scheduled big leaguers, and they won't overwork those guys because of an injury like would happen in the regular season. They will get their scheduled work at the scheduled time and amount. So the fill-in for the Bolsinger innings will come from the minor league side. Can't think of a more flattering acronym than a JIC. I'll tell you what, you wanted to get it, though. When you're on the minor league side <laughs> yeah. battling your way to get to <laughs> the big chance. league roster, oh, you can call me whatever you want. I'm <laughs> yeah. going up to the big league. I'm uh -huh. going away from <laughs> a ham <laughs> sandwich, <laughs> and I'm going to a warm meal. <laughs> Double zero? Really? I don't care, right? Dangerous pitch here to a good hitter. And it's three and two. We've got outstanding food here in Dodger camp on both sides, Major League and Minor League side now, and a lot of it is completely healthy and organic, and the guys are eating much better. But on our side in my day, Domar, you know, it was a ham sandwich and a cup of soup, maybe. <laughs> there you go. There's the there's the peanut butter and jelly and the bread. Yeah, right. make your own. Yes. <laughs> Jay and Spangenberg with back-to-back -back singles to start the inning. Weep with an outfield assist to third to cut down Jay. And after the Kemp ground out, a full count on the four hitter, Will Myers. And Jeremy Kurt throws a breaking ball by him to get out of the inning. How about that from Jeremy Kurt, who found out just moments ago that he'd be taking the ball to start this one. Get some help from that guy. Yasiel Puig will bat second on the other side of this break.
another group of guys went up to Maryville to take on the Brewers. Bob Guerin, the bench coach, went with them. You saw Dave Roberts here managing this lineup. Holly Kendrick, that's lead off for the third time this spring with the Osiel Puig. Justin Turner, both back at the lineup after the off day yesterday. Same thing with Jock Peterson, who was back on the minor league fields getting some ABs in yesterday. And Jeremy Kurt will grab a bat out of that nine spot. Robbie Erland gets the ball for the Padres. What do we know about him? Well, he spent most of last year in AAA. He came up in September and had three stars for San Diego. You know, from the left side, not overpowering, more of a finesse-type pitcher. You know, his average is about 90 miles an hour on that fastball, but he'll feature a curveball and a changeup to try to keep you off balance, put the ball in play, and hopefully get ground balls. Now he Kendrick slaps one to second. Spangenberg ranges into the hole to throw him out. One away, and Yasiel Pui coming to the plate. We were talking in San Diego during the top half of this inning and how bad the defense was last year. They're hoping for some improvements, getting Alexi Ramirez at short, getting John Jay in center, but you still have some guys who historically have not been good defensively. Now John Jay in center field is going to track the fly ball down a lot better than Will Myers did, who got some time out there in center. And what they're hoping from Melvin Upton Jr. to actually catch some balls out there in left field, but what the real aspiration out there is for him to figure out his long-term offensive problems. Yeah, from the defensive side, I think with John Jay in center and Upton in left, they're going to cover some ground. We see that nice play as a comeback over there by Robbie Erlin. But even in the infield, I mean, they're they were also looking to see how they can solidify that infield. And, you know, it'll be interesting with Will Myers over that first base. I think he can do a solid and admirable job, but but the first baseman usually helps the infield an awful lot and makes the infield better. I mean, such as we see at the Dodgers. Adrian Gonzalez makes the infield better mm -hmm. because he is so good at first base. Justin Turner, after a couple of days off, still easing back from that knee surgery following last year. Made his spring debut about a week ago. Playing in his fourth game now. It's on this 1-0. It takes a strike from Erlen. Three for six so far in his three games of Cactus League action. JT. JT is so important to this offense. Over the last two seasons, one of the top eight hitters in the major leagues. I mean, he's in with names of Cabrera, and Morneau, and Posey, and then right in there with himself and Goldschmidt. So if you're going to get 140 games out of him, if you can keep him healthy and they can rest him enough, the other 22, and he has another season like he has the last two. The Dodger offense will be in good hands. And the number one offensive third baseman in the majors the last two years, to your point, Oral, and it's in every category. It's not like, well, you're an old school guy, so you think that because batting average was highest among third basemen, he's been the best. Or you're a new school guy, so it's, you know, another Sabre metric category. It's just about every category. This guy's led third baseman across baseball. Grounds out the short, and Robbie Erlin executes a 1 2 3 first inning. On to the second, no score.
Top of the second inning, Jeremy Kurt on for his second inning of work as a Dodger in spring. Mike Bolsinger, a late scratch, guys. The update is abdominal tightness, as you might expect, day to day. All right, Alana, we we'll appreciate you digging out that information. As Salarte stands in and takes a strike, Jeremy Kurt's on for him. Oral, let me go to you with that. You know, off of what Alana tells us, the abdominal tightness. It's a game no matter your hitter or a pitcher. It's tough when you start dealing with issues in there. Yeah, you know, you don't know if it's in oblique or if it's somewhere in the rib cage or what it is, but it was definitely some tightness, and hopefully he felt like something might pull. He mentioned it probably to Rick Honeycutt or somebody wanted to look at or something he's been dealing with, and he said, you know, it's just not loosening up. And so hopefully he did not pull something that's not a pull, that it's just tight, and it's something they'll be able to get through very quickly. And they're going to take every precaution, especially right now. We talked about their already their pitching depth has been challenged early in spring with uh, Brett Anderson going down. And, you know, if, you know, they just option Zach Lee, as you mentioned earlier, Joe, and... Now you have, you know, Bolsinger, I think, was the front runner for that fifth start. So if they're still th considering that, they're like, we're not going to take any chances. We're going to make sure you go out there and feel okay because we can't afford another injury. Better to be safe than sorry. And for the fact that he did recognize it in the bullpen before he got out there and was letting it rip in the game, will save him some. There's a blast to deep left center off of the bat of Derek Norris, and that ball is one hopping off of the wall. Salarte rounds third. He heads home on a double from Derek Norris, and the Padres strike first. We talked about, about Zach Lee. We talked about with Urias. The younger pitchers, as they get to the big leagues and exposed to big league hitters, they learn the difference between a quality pitch in the minor leagues and a quality pitch at the big league level, and big league hitters make you pay more often. That was a fastball up in the strike zone. Jeremy Kurt, former Boston Red Sox farmhand, in his second season in the Dodgers system. This will be his ninth pro season. Debuted in the minors back in 2008. Works on Alexi Ramirez now. Ball one. Ramirez over from the White Sox. They're hoping they got him on a steal. One year, $4 million. And the thought in San Diego, or the hope in San Diego, is that that team-friendly deal came because of the slide down the stretch for him last year. Wasn't nearly as good as he'd been earlier in his career. They're hoping that he rediscovers that form from early on last year and over the first several years of his career in Chicago. He's at his best when he's trying to hit hard ground balls in line drives, and he'll learn that very quickly at Petco because those lazy fly balls will definitely come to rest in outfielders' gloves. Maybe the equation will wake up his consistency and his line drive ability. In the air to center, Peterson slipped at first, and it drops in for a base hit. Norris had to wait to make sure it was going to fall. So he'll stop at third, and a base hit from Alexi Ramirez. It's a good changeup from Jeremy Kurt. That's what Greg Maddox told Alana Rizzo as far as the scouting report from him. The second best pitch in his repertoire is his changeup, and that was a good one. Just stuck the bat out and placed it out there in the outfield grass. So even big league hitters can even hit good, uh, you know, good pitches too. At yeah. times. That's, that's a problem when so they hit your bad hit ones <laughs> and they hit your good ones. That's the problem. Melvin Upton Jr. That's how he was born. He went to BJ, obviously. Changed his name back to Melvin. Regardless of what his name is, that ball is corked into the corner, and it will score two. Melvin Upton Jr. with a two-run double, and it's 3-0 San Diego. We talk about having to have the command. That one still catching too much of the plate, trying to get inside on Melvin Upton Jr. Not enough. He does a good job getting the barrel to the ball and keeping that ball fair.
So after a scoreless first inning, the first four have reached against him here in the second. He hit Salarte to begin the frame. Norris doubled. Ramirez singled. Now Upton Jr. has doubled. Matt Hurd just making the mound visit there. I'm not sure if Rick Honeycutt is in the bench or they sent Matt out there because Matt, Rick Honeycutt went on the road. Rick's over with Bob Guerin on the other split squad game. So Erlen, the pitcher, up there to bunt and lays it down to third. Turner's got it. Throws him out. The third goes up to Junior. Well executed by Robbie Erlen. He must have watched your uh, display you put on with Maury Wills this morning in a <laughs> sponsorship event. No, Maury was trying to recruit you to go back and show the folks how to bunt. Right? Yeah, we didn't have to do it very long, but there, there were some details to it. <laughs> Keep the bat above the ball, get the bat at the top of the strike zone, deaden the ball with two hands so you don't change the angle. A few more things. Tell them where to put their hands so don't wrap around the bat so they don't break their fingers. I and, told them that, okay. too. That's, that's, and I told that's them an if, important part. If they were you, you wouldn't have to learn how to bunt. <laughs> Back at the top, John Jay takes ball one. You were saying this morning that you would have gotten fined if you had bunted after your um, rookie there, year, right? There are definitely times yeah. where they're like, what are you doing squaring around? Well, have you not seen my swing? It's not working either, <laughs> so I was trying to help myself out. That ball is called into center. John Jay with his second solid single against Kurt. It's a four on frame as Upton Jr. scores from third. Four nothing, Padres. <laughs> Pretty good pitch down by the knees, a little bit of a tail to it, but kind of center cut. Nice swing by John Jay. Tori Spangenberg now had a good swing on Curtin, his first stab bat as well. Moved into the starting second baseman role late last season. Hoping to win that job outright this year into the everyday role mid-August after he missed the big stretch with a knee injury but came back and really performed well for him. It's Andy Green, their new manager. Breaking ball, cut over the top of one and one. Number 10th overall pick back in 2011 out of a junior college. It was a while that he was a top 100 prospect before breaking into the bigs two years ago. Two and one. There's another rocket. Base hit and a right for Spangenberg. Quee comes up and bobbles it and will throw into second as Jay goes first to third. Yeah, that is the fifth hit of this frame against Kirk. Catch him once again, too much of the middle of the plate. Not getting out there in the corner, up a little bit up in the zone. Spangenberg did a good job waiting on that ball. And then Yasiel in the outfield thinking he was going to have another chance at John Jay at third. Going first to third, he got a little bit too excited. And might have lifted his head up just a little bit too early before he had the ball. So here's Matt Kemp. Grounded out sharply to short his first time. Spent his first nine years in a Dodger uniform before going to the Padres before last year. Had a solid second half after a rough first half. A lot like his final season in Los Angeles. Wound up hitting 265 and reached the 100 RBI mark in his first year in a Padre uniform. It's almost like Matt Kemp breaks camp, you know, going into the big league season nice and easy. And then when the, the numbers kind of go down and he kind of gets prideful and starts to concentrate in every at bat. And he he can, has had some great resurgence second halves. I mean, last year, the last 70 games, he was 17 home runs, 58 RBIs. 
first half of the season though you hit 239 only six home runs. It's on this 2-0 from Jeremy Kurt and pounds a base hit in the left. Jay is in to score. Spangenberg going first to third. And an RBI single from Matt Kemp. And the Padres pouring it on, Kurt, here in the second inning. Well, when it comes to somebody that's just in case, comes up, gets that call, you know, go, I think, one or two ways. Sometimes they just come in and just flat out dominate. You're like, whoa. Gets an opportunity, and then it can go this way where, all right, got out of the first inning, the second inning, you're going, gosh, I'm just, I know I wasn't expected to pitch, pitch at this level, and I'm just getting too much in the middle part of the plate. You Will feel bad for the young man. Will Myers, ninth man to bat in the frame, takes a strike. I hope there won't have to be any damage repaired to his psyche when he goes back over to the minor league side. This is a, a rough inning but even big leaguers have had innings like this well Myers now collects a base hit that'll score Spangenberg from third Kemp to second and it's six nothing and the ninth San Diego hit so Dave Roberts comes out of that third base dugout Like you said, Oral, you feel for him. Close to an impossible situation. But Mike Holsinger was scratched in the minutes leading up to the game. Throws on jersey number 0, zero. Comes in and gives it his best shot. Carlos Frias comes into the game. We come back in a moment. Frias is the new Dodgers pitcher on for the fifth time this spring. Three runs allowed in his eighth innings of work. Well, Carlos is a guy that brings versatility. And sometimes that is a curse and sometimes that is a blessing. I think at times for Carlos it has been a curse because he's not always in a battle for a job because he can do both. He could set up. He could be a long man in the bullpen. He could be a starter. And right now, with Mike Bolsinger being a question mark after today's scratch, he knows that his stock has gone up and his opportunity has gone up to possibly squeak into the rotation or make himself a viable candidate in that bullpen for sure. And here it's runners at first and second with just one out. Young Herbis Solarte swings at the first one shoots a one hopper to short Hernandez spears it goes to second one and they turn the double play beautiful all around Hernandez to Kendrick and Bellinger scoops it out of there Carlos Frias needs only one pitch to get out of the end just great defense all around started by the play by Kike here but also the turn he didn't get a good 
grip on the ball by Howie Kendrick, but look at Cody Bellinger at first base, finishing off the nice double play. The next episode of Backstage Dodgers. L.A. by Carl's Jr. The $4 real deal. Four items for just four bucks at Carl's Jr. Back here at Camelback Ranch. Temperatures expected to reach the low 90s again today. Did so yesterday. This is the hottest it's been all spring. Orlando Rizzo tells us. I guess it's hard for us to say that other than having uh, looked at the weather app. She's been here grinding away all spring. Supposed to cool off again by the end of the week. And it is a scorcher today for this one. With the Padres in front of the Dodgers, six nothing. Leading those six runs against spot starter Jeremy Kurt, who came on after Mike Bolsinger was scratched in the minutes leading up to the game. And Alana Rizzo reporting some abdominal tightness for Mike Bolsinger leading to that scratch. Yeah, it's another blow to the Dodger rotation, but as we get more information, hopefully it will be a conservative play by the Dodgers to scratch Mike, and it's not an injury that it was just tightness that they needed to avoid and give him some rest. And then the Dodger team, you know, falls behind with the sixth spot, but Carlos Frias, who has a chance to really be on the big league roster, comes in and gets that key double play to squash the rally by the Padres. 
Carl, speaking of like Carlos Frias, I mean, you talked about it could be a blessing and a curse at some point. Will, they, will you have to make a decision with Carlos to say, okay, you're going to be a starter or you're going to be a reliever so he can just kind of focus on, you know, being the best, whatever that may be, pitcher he can be? Yeah, that, that happens to guys that can throw three and four pitches for strikes, and they're all quality big league pitches. So those are the kind of guys that you can stretch out and, as you know, can get around a big league order more than once. And the guys that get pinned is short relievers are guys that maybe can only pitch through the, the you know the, the batting order once and they have maybe one or two pitches or they have one exceptional pitch where they can get that strikeout with a man on third and less than two outs so with Carlos's situations I think he could be an effective guy in both roles and it is kind of a curse for him I think because it doesn't put him right into the nitty-gritty where you got to make a decision about him middle third of the Dodgers order coming up in the second inning against Robbie Erlin Kike Hernandez had a nice day yesterday with a couple of base hits. Take strike one. Alana Rizzo, you've got more on Carlos Frias. Well, Joe, Dave Roberts was asked that very question this morning before the game, and he said if he's on the big league club, he is going to be a reliever. As far as his long-term role and what he'd do in the minors, it'd be as a starter. Kike Hernandez flying out there, looks like, to center field. He said the thing about that he like about Carlos Frias is the fact that he has a rubber arm. Don Mattingly said that all year last year. They like the way that his arm responds. They like his future. They like his flexibility. Depending upon where he starts is where he'll be. And when I spoke about it, it's not as much speaking for the organization as much being for Carlos. You know, and he has to shine in one of those roles to almost force the organization's hand. Because when you have that versatility, that is a great tool for the club and for a roster. A.J. Ellis climbs in for his first at-bat of the day out of the five spot. Second straight start here in Cactus League action. Takes away two balls and no strikes. And shoots one the other way. Kemp comes on and makes the play. You see that versatility happen in the guy that's battling for a big league job. In the infield, Nomar, somebody that can play all three positions, like second, short, third, and all of a sudden he really doesn't get thrown into one battle. You do, but Ed, a lot of times, and we've seen it, I mean, the Dodgers are a perfect example. Uh, Justin Turner. Mm -hmm. Justin Turner is one where you're going, okay, there's so much value in his versatility to play multiple positions that I think it's usually the offense that comes through or proves whether they want to stick you in one and say, okay, we need that bat in the lineup. And right. Like we see this year with Justin Turner, we're playing the majority at third base. Jack Peterson got some at-bats on the minor league side yesterday. Back-to-back -back days off for him and Dave Roberts saying he expects to play him these three days in a row going into the off day on Wednesday. He's had a pretty good spring at average above 300 so far. Hoping he can regain his form from the first half last year where for a couple of months it would be hard to make an argument for anybody else as NL Rookie of the Year. Even a guy like Chris Bryant who wound up winning the award. The narrative was, well, if not for Jack Peterson, Bryant might be your rookie of the year. But we know how it all finished with Bryant getting really hot. Jack going in the other direction in the second half. One and two. We see some adjustments to his swing, Nomar, at least especially to the stance. Looks like there's a little bit more weight on the back leg. A little narrower stance trying to cut down that leg kick. Trying to cut it down, but you see that, you know, you see that heel hip on that front one with the heel up. Trying to figure out that balance, but for me, it's really about his hands also to the ball. It's trying to shorten that up where it doesn't have to be so big. And right there, that's a perfect example. Without that high leg kick, not taking it, that'll allow him to stay back on that breaking ball better. You know, if he has that high leg kick, when he was getting in trouble, a lot of times with a high leg kick, his body would shift forward. So even on the off speed, he'd be out in front. But he's just kind of shorter. There it is, just straight to the ball. So it gave him some time to stay back on that off speed and still have enough to fight it off there to center field. Really different to see somebody have their front foot with the toe in the air. That looks like no, it's something it's to keep the leg kick down. Listen, so, I'm sure he's working with uh, Turner Ward, all that going. Listen, for everybody's 
individual. You can't make robots out there, especially when it comes to hitting, saying, okay, we're going to reduce that leg kick. What is it for you as a feeling jock that can possibly get you to that? So I'm sure they were tinkering with it, and he's probably going, you know, if I have my heel down and my toe up, it'll shorten that. So, okay, let's go with it. Mm -hmm. Let's try it, man. Right now, hey, if it's working, and he's, it's all about building that confidence for Jock Peterson. If he feels confident with it, then go with it. And now's the time to do it, right? It can be so hard to make those adjustments midseason while the league is adjusting to you, while the league is getting that book on you and what was his rookie year. Corey Brown bounces one off of the glove to second. Spangenberg makes a nice play to get the force out at second and retire the side. Dodgers get their first base run over the day and a two-out single from Jock Peterson, but trail 6-0. be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the doctor. Six runs second inning for the Padres in a 6-0 game. We start the third inning and Dodgers fans be sure to mark your calendar for Wednesday April 13th. Dodgers play host to the D-backs at 7-10. And the first 40,000 fans in attendance get an adult hooded sweatshirt presented by Bank of America. For tickets, you can go to Dodgers.com slash promotions. Derek Norris leads off this inning against Carlos Frias, who has doubled his pitch total for the day with that one toss. He needed just one pitch to get a double play to get out of the second. Yeah, it was one pitch, but it was also a great job behind him with that defense and that double play. We talked about Jock Peterson making some adjustments when you see the new batting stance from him. Carlos Frias has got some new mechanics here where he's trying to get his front shoulder up a little higher, not tilting it down so he can stay on top of the ball a little bit longer, make the ball bite down. Norris pops one into short right. Kendrick battling that sunshine, runs it down, one down. Prior to 1969, or really 68, Baseball lowered the mound, and back then the pitchers, the Juan Marichals and the Don Drysdales, you know, and the Sandy Kovacs, everybody had the big tilt of the shoulders and the hips. But the reason they could do that is because the mound, the angle of the mound, because it was so high, would take that tilt away. And so they come back to level. Well, when you're a pitcher in the modern day, now with the, the mound being so level and not as steep, you have to watch your shoulder tilt. There's a high fly ball to the left. Corey Brown on the move. He gets there. You have Alex to, Ramirez retired. You have to get some angle with your shoulders and your hips and just create enough so that the hill now takes it away. But some of our younger right-handers have a tendency to keep their shoulders level or even tilted down. And Rick Honeycutt has been working with them over the years that they've been in the big leagues, and some have been slow to come. And Carlos is really starting to get it now where he can tilt his shoulders a little bit back and his hips a little bit back so that the gets that leverage going down the hill and you can now 
consciously stay on top of the ball and not feel like you're going to spike it right in front of you. If you have your shoulders low and don't create the hip angle, and now the the bound takes you down even farther, you feel like you're going to spike it, so then you want to drop your elbow, come underneath the ball, and throw a flat pitch. But now with that front shoulder up, he can stay with the delivery longer and drive the ball down. And he's going to execute a 1-2-3 inning. With three fly ball outs, Jock Peterson is there. But he getting involved in the action with those pop-ups. One to second, one to left, one to center. One, two, three. Go the Padres in the third. Padres in this one bottom three coming up opening day two weeks from tomorrow between these two teams Down in San Diego freeway series will conclude what is technically spring training And then the season opener then the home opener after the team plays the three games in San Diego They'll head up to San Francisco for four And back to Dodger Stadium for the home debut April 12th 8 9 and 1 for the Dodgers in this inning Cody Bellinger then the pitcher's spot, and then back to the top with Howie Kendrick. First pitch to the 20-year-old from right here in Arizona. In there from Robbie Erland, strike one. Bellinger's already flashed that glove today, picking one out of the dirt in the double play. That's what he's been known for as a prospect. Swinging it well this spring, though. We always talk about the young guys coming up, getting opportunity here at the big league level that you may not break camp at the big league roster, but you want to leave an impression just in case anything were to happen. Soft bounce at her first. Will Myers feeds Erlen, who beats Bellinger to the bag for the first out. It was a test for Will Myers, who's learning a new position over there at first base, and one that he will get a lot where he's got to feed a pitcher. And a little flip. A special one where there's not going to be much time past that test. You know, Nomar, earlier you talked about uh, having a first baseman over that's learning, and they usually are the ones that are helping, you know, infielders. Do you change your strategy as an infielder if you're playing short, second, or third? Have you got a new first baseman? Do you concentrate more on your throw in a certain place? Do you well, not it's, rush things? It's not necessarily if you got a new first baseman as much as you. Sometimes you know some first basemen are better than others, especially it's not that they can't catch the ball, but the ones that are really good who can catch the balls in the dirt, your mistakes. How about Frias trying to bump for a base hit? Yeah, he'll do that. And they're right back to Erlin, who throws them out two away. But when you have a first baseman, like, say, Adrian Gonzalez, where you know, gosh, when I make that Aaron throw, and he's saving you, he's saving that air, 
it makes you better in the infield because you have that confidence that even if I make a mistake, he'll pick you up. But then it's a little bit different when you're going, I have to be perfect with a guy who may not be good at picking the ball in the dirt. And I'm like, all right, now, so you have a tendency to probably make more mistakes because you're thinking about, oh, my goodness, I have to be perfect. Howie Kendrick takes strike one. Now with the say, you know, Lopes... Russell and then Garvey infield Steve was not the tallest of first baseman But he had great hands and was a great picker of the baseball and so those guys thrown over to him always made sure their mistake was low always Howie Kendrick bangs one on the ground into center for a base hit He's been swinging it well the last few days After dealing with a groin injury for a couple of weeks seeing more action lately and He stays back on that breaking ball as well the other day, yesterday, he was going to right field, staying inside, especially off a of Chris Sale fastball, going the other way here. Not throwing quite as hard, but in the breaking ball, stays back and drives it up the middle. That brings up Puig, who went after the first pitch that he saw against Erlin his first time up and bounced back to the mound. like Jock Peterson Dodgers hoping that Yasiel Puig can recapture form from earlier in his career dealt with those hamstring injuries all the last season and takes outside two balls and no strikes you know the we even joked around about it coming into the uh, broadcast yesterday about being in the best shape of our lives because that's so cliche in spring training but Yasiel Puig did put in the extra work this offseason and shaped the body the way the front office had said they Wanted to see him come in. Sometimes when you have a scare early in your career, it's the thing that changes your work ethic and makes you focus a little bit more on what the trainers and the strength and conditioning people are telling you that they would like you to change. And I think the scare for Yasiel was the fact that he was carrying a little bit more weight than they wanted him to, and he was getting the pull hamstrings. And I think that the fact that his body started to break down a little bit on him, he said, you know what? I'm going to make a change. And earns the walk. Let's check in with Alana. One thing Yasiel Puig did, guys, he said, of course, you guys were just talking about the hamstring issue. He really wanted to get the weight off because of that. But he really said that he felt that he had a terrible year last year. And he didn't feel good about the fact that he wasn't there for his teammates, considering he missed so much time with both hamstring issues. One thing he did as far as the diet was concerned was stop eating as much rice, which as a Cuban, I can say this, very hard to do. <laughs> Cutting those carbs out. Here's Justin Turner. He grounded out the short his first time. It takes ball one. Yeah, guys, Puig had said that last year was his worst season, not just as a big leaguer, because pretty clearly it was, but the worst season of his entire life. He said in all aspects of his life, and it kind of dripped over into the game. Well, I mean, obviously he made adjustments as far as diet's concerned, body getting in shape, because he, that's just from a health standpoint. There's also other adjustments he's going to need to make that we're going to have to see from a playing standpoint. And I'm not talking about we saw a great throw. We know he can play great defense out there, but at home, at the plate, you know, in his stance, the adjustments, um, you know, big league pitchers are figuring him out, finding holes and finding multiple ways to get him out. And he's going to have to learn how he has to adjust to those guys so that they don't get them out consistent, consistently. You think it's a mechanical adjustment or a mental adjustment? I think it's a combination of both. I think mechanically he has a tendency to get a little long when he casts his arms out and starts rolling over the ball, starts reaching. Uh, when he was really successful early, when he came up to the big league, he was driving the ball to right center, the right field. He has to take that approach. And then from a mental standpoint, too, a lot of it is what he's thinking in his approach at the plate, you know? Turner down on strikes, and that retires the side. Dodgers get a couple of base runners, but nothing to show for it after three, six, nothing.
All six runs for the Padres came in the second inning, six nothing. We go to the fourth, and we go to Alana Rizzo. Well, Joe, starting shortstop Corey Seager hurt his left knee. It's a left knee sprain back on March 11th. Nine days later, he was back on the field, which is such good news to see. He worked out with head strength and conditioning coach Brandon McDaniel. As far as being able to run, he said he's about 75% effort. And as far as being able to do other activities, he was basically moving side to side with Brandon rolling balls to him just to kind of get that movement back in. He says he feels so much better. He was even able to hit off of in the cage today off of flips. So Corey Seager doing better and is expected to be ready for opening day guys and that was the big thing I mean, when he was held out of the lineup with that knee injury and then had to go in to get test done on that knee I think everybody was fearing the worst so a huge collective sigh of relief first when they got the news that there was no true structural damage and then the more recent updates with Dave Roberts saying that they do expect him to be ready when the team opens the season in San Diego two weeks from tomorrow and that's very encouraging and also just mentally for him when you hear that there's no structural damage you're like okay so that means I'm just gonna I can go about my business and once it's about the pain subsides I don't have to worry about it Robbie Erlin with a base hit into center something he's only done three times in his entire career as a big leaguer to lead off this fourth inning Corey was joking with me, and I don't think he would mind me sharing this, but as I was walking down the hallway past him, he had the full uni on, and he's getting ready to go out, and he goes, oh, this is awesome. I'm, the frustration's going away. I said, what was the most frustrating part? He goes, the window's in the training room. You're in there getting treatment, and you're staring out the windows, watching everybody take BP and bunning <laughs> practice with Maury and all that. He says, they got to get rid of the windows in the training room. <laughs> Because you're seeing where you oh, want to be, yeah, yeah, where you yeah, want to be, and I yeah. understand exactly. Because we've been hurt, Nomar and I, for sure. And it's, it's the worst thing to be right around the thing you love in spring training, which is a great time. And for him, being the starting shortstop of the Los Angeles Dodgers, then all of a sudden coming up with a tweak. How frustrating! John Jay grounds a base hit into right. Erlin and Jay with back-to-back -back singles off Frias to begin this fourth inning. Any concern, guys, as far as missing the final probably two or three weeks of spring training, assuming that he doesn't get significant action towards the end and then opening the season coming off of that? You know, I, I'm not too much. One is make sure you're healthy. But I, I, if, especially right now, you still got two weeks. And really about, you know, a week. He's already come into shape. He got a little bit in early. You're dealing with the knee from the mental side. I think he's just going to need a few at-bats. And if he feels good, they're going to watch him. Spangenberg lays it down beautifully. Turner has to hurry. Not in time. Spangenberg beats it out. The Padres have loaded the bases to start the fourth. You know, big league veterans will tell you that spring training is too long for them. So for Corey, he probably would have wanted the full spring training to get used to the turning double plays with Howie Kendrick and different things. But uh, I think he has been so precocious in his development as far as so quickly getting everything I don't think this is going to set him back and we just saw a fine play effort by Justin Turner mm -hmm. just a fine bunt by Spangenberg but talking about setting back it's good to see Justin Turner out there too because he coming in with the, dealing with that knee injury and see him moving around making plays so we're going to definitely keep a close eye on him and make sure he stays healthy as long as he can now Kemp with the bases loaded Carlos Frias delivers ball one and with the injuries that the Dodgers have dealt with during the spring, most recent one obviously being Seeger, but we talked about how he Kendrick was down for a while with a groin injury, easing Turner back, easing Hernandez back. You forget that he had shoulder surgery following the season last year. Adrian Gonzalez away with Team Mexico. There's a ground ball to second that they turn two on. Another great play by Hernandez off of the turn from Kendrick. But my point is, guys, that We've not yet seen a single inning of what we expect to be the Dodgers starting infield together this spring. And, and that's not uncommon in spring training. It, it really isn't. I think you'll start seeing that, you know, and, and you mentioned because of health reasons at times, but you'll start seeing that kind of toward the last week. When everybody, and then you're going to see them together, and not only together playing a lot longer, maybe playing closer to five to seven innings before they come out. You see in spring training early on, no more. 
you put pieces like you put the left side of the infield out there one day the next day the right side of the infields out there or you put the guys up the middle out there one day and you put the guys on the corners out there the next day same thing in the outfield if you've got four or five outfitters you might put the center fielder that needs to get to know the left fielder out there put the center fielder that needs to get to know the right fielder out there the next day this one gets by aj ellis and it will allow the runner to score from third spangenberg is in and it's eight nothing san diego A.J. Ellis will be upset with himself on that one. And that ball had some serious movement on Carlos Frias. Really good And bite. the way he got that glove to it. He, you know, it's one of those where you're constantly seeing the pitcher and recognizing the movement. And all of a sudden they throw a fastball that has even more movement than you anticipate. And you miss it. Well, A.J. will tell you that he should have had it for sure. But he'll also tell you that that's new and great and late movement. And I think it's from... Carlos's new mechanics and he will stay on top and through that ball so he's going to spin it more and it's going to have more finish so AJ was probably catching last year's sinker but there might be a new power turbo sinker coming out of Carlos's arm Frias to Myers with the one two in a moment time is called at home Six in the second, two here in the fourth, and a one-two. Just misses inside, count evens up. And Will Myers. <laughs> Painted over the outside edge for strike three. What do you think of that one, Oral? Well, when you can run it in on their hands and then you can hang it on the outside corner, the hitter's just going to have to tip his cap to Carlos Frias. Padres by a bunch. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. You can guarantee your tickets to opening day this year, by the way, with the 2016 Los Angeles Dodgers mini plan. Choose some great promotional games featuring fan favorites like bobbleheads and brand new retired number pins. Visit Dodgers.com slash mini plans. Joe Davis, Nomar Garcia Parra, Oral Hershiser, Alana Rezzo, back at Camelback Ranch. Glendale, Arizona. Little third of the Dodgers order coming up against Robbie Erlin. Who delivers strike one somewhere back there to Kike Hernandez. He bats out of the cleanup spot today. Something that he's not done in his entire big league regular season career. And not necessarily something you expect to see a lot of once the regular season rolls around. Seems like for much of the lineup guys there will be not necessarily something 
that's locked in on an everyday basis. No, I, I think when you look at this lineup, and you know, we've seen it kind of in spring, I think you'll see like Adrian Gonzalez, and obviously he's away right now playing for the World Baseball Classic, but I think he'll be in that four hole. I think that might be something you see quite often and more solidified. I think they're looking at Justin Turner possibly being in that three hole in front of him. Um, but, you know, we know, is he going to be, you know, how many games is he going to play? They're going to watch that as well to make sure he stays healthy throughout the year. So there'll be changes there. I think the two-hole will be pretty solid with Howie Kendrick. His just approach is prototypical two-hole hitter, such as that one, where he can stay inside the ball and drive it the other way like Kike almost did right there. And, you know, there's no, they don't have a leadoff hitter. So the one-hole, you know, we even heard Dave Roberts say, well, I'm using Andre Ethier there at times. Um, and, you know, he'll try to see. We've seen Kike kind of lead off here as well in spring. So he'll try to figure out who's going to be in that lead off. And then after that, you know, it's it's going to be a mix. And, you know, you always hear the line, you know, the team that they feel is going to give them the best chance to win for that day. Full count on Hernandez. And as a hitter, Omar, you, you understand that there's going to be different guys in different spots. But you like to, like you mentioned, it looks like maybe Turner in the three spot, Gonzalez in the four. You might have changing across the lineup, but it's nice to have a few spots where you can count on who's going to be in there. For a lot of teams, it's usually if you can get one through five. If your one through five is solid and you know, that's that's when you know that, first of all, that usually means the offense is rolling and doing really well. And, and they can learn how to produce runs, especially in the National League. That one through five, that's consistent. They learn how to produce that one run when it's needed. Um, when switching around, it's kind of hard to get into a rhythm with each other. Hernandez down on strikes. The real wild card in our lineup, I think, is Yasiel Puig. And if Yasiel becomes Yasiel again, it really gives them a lot of options and a lot of different holes. I, I think you're exactly right because we talk about Justin Turner. Let's say Justin Turner is in that three hole. Well, then you can put Yasiel. People are like, well, wouldn't you put him up higher? No, you would put Yasiel in that five hole to give Adrian some support. Because now you've got to decide, because now it gives you right, left, right. It puts pressure on the opposing manager. From it comes to going to the bullpen, you go to the righty, to the lefty. You have, you know, if he's Yasiel that we've seen when he first came upon the scene, he's, you're going to allow Adrian Gonzalez to get more pitches, drive in more. So he, and then when Justin Turner may not be in there, he can go in the third hole. Exactly. Ground ball to short, Alexi Ramirez. Throws out A.J. Ellis. And if Yasiel could get to the point where he could drive the run in, the big run in from third, less than two outs, then he could slip up into the three hole because he runs better than Justin Turner. And Justin Turner can go back down beyond Adrian to protect him there and drive in the key runs in the five hole, which is a huge RBI production slot. But really what you're seeing is Justin Turner is one of the better hitters in the all of baseball in the last two years. And because he doesn't play as much and as you know he but he drives in those runs and he doesn't run as well as you want a three hit hole hitter but he does drive in those runs you've got to put him up there right now but Yasiel if he can do his thing can give you more choices and if those pieces that you just mentioned settle into those spots another thing that it does is it allows this guy and Jack Peterson to settle into his spot down the bottom half of the order lower pressure spot to try and get back on track, regain some of the form from early on last year. And not only that, even if you regain the form, you can still, it lengthens the lineup. If he's swinging the bat well, now you're going, wow, even on the back end of the lineup, you got a power guy and a guy who's putting the ball in more consistently. If things have changed for Jock Peterson, now it lengthens that lineup. Let's not forget about Yasmani Grandal. For sure. Your catcher going out and there. He putting gives you a lot of versatility with the switch hitting ability. Exactly. Erlen trying to work one, two, three, fourth. Two and two on Jock Peterson. He singled his first time. It's one of two hits today for the Dodgers, both singles against Erlen. Tyson Ross, by the way, was scheduled to pitch today, but the Padres elected to not start one of their uh, rotation members, one of their top starting pitchers against a team they'll see time and time again during the regular season. Stent throwing Erlen, who brings 2 2. And misses downstairs to run it full. Yasmani's you know, another one that really could bolster the offense. If he has his first half again and he's coming back healthy after surgery this year, and he could really, you know, put a, a charge into the offense again. 
Peterson down on strikes and a breaking ball. And for the first time since the first, Dodgers down in order. It's 8 0 San Diego in this portion of the split squad game. Just up the road, Maryville, the Dodgers' other squad taking on the Brewers down 2 1, top of the fifth inning. Scott Casimir, four innings, four hits, and one earned run. Dodgers' run coming on a Charlie Culberson home run. It's over. At the Brewers facility, Bob Guerin, the bench coach for the Dodgers, up there managing that team. Here, Jamie Wright comes in, replacing Carlos Frias. Jamie Wright coming off the a year of retirement, playing catch with Clayton Kershaw. Said the ball was coming out pretty good in the offseason and decided to come into camp on Clayton's recommendation. And thrown here in spring, trying to earn himself a spot on the roster. Good news from Kashmir over there. He struggled this spring and putting on the new uniform. It's a big cog in the rotation. Dodger fans shouldn't forget, though, that despite his 7 11 record last year, he was in the top five in Major League Baseball for all left handed pitchers in ERA. Scott Kashmir with a 3.10. That's in there with the names, of course, like Clayton Kershaw and David Price and Madison Bumgarner. And right, right after that, in the five hole, Kashmir was right there. So good that it was the first move really if you think back to the deadline that Houston pulled the trigger on to get him from Oakland and struggled down the stretch as you mentioned Oral, but was really good over the first half of the season. Alana you've got more on Scott Kazmir. Well Joe so much has been made about the fact that it seems like his velocity is down a few ticks but speaking with Yasmani Grandal after Yasmani caught him in that B game a couple of days ago about a five days ago now he said that. He didn't notice any sort of ground out to a second there. He didn't notice any sort of issue with the velocity at all. He said the thing that they were working on the most was not only the tempo of the game, but just the continuity between Scott Kazmir and Yasmani Grandal behind the plate, basically getting more used to the fact of being battery mates with one another. He said when he needed to ramp it up, he was able to do so, not thinking the velo is an issue at all. I could tell you as far as velocity, sometimes as you are a veteran, you need the triple decker stadiums to get the velocity all the way up to get the adrenaline up that the workouts here in spring training the games here it's a lot about finding your rhythm and not really looking for adrenaline or getting adrenaline that sometimes gives you that extra two to three mile an hour i've come out of camp before and my average fastball was somewhere between 88 and 92 in my day and i'd come out of camp at 86 87 sometimes and that first start i was right there at 90 91. Eric Norris loops one over the glove of Fernandez for a base hit. Had Twitter been around, it would have been blowing up. The Wolves' <laughs> velocity being down. Aren't we glad? 
second hit of the day for Norris. And and we've seen just in this game where it's not always about velocity, too. I mean, it's also about just, you know, we, we see this earlier today's game. We had J Jeremy Kirk come in this game, and it was not being able to, you know, hit the corners. It was about command, and he was getting hit around. And so I think what Casimir knows that he reinvented himself, recognizing that it is about his command. So that was really has been his focus all spring. It's not about the velocity, but hitting his spots. And Alana just touched on it. And getting that continuity with your catcher. New new environment. Because I'm sure you talk about not only will the triple decker get the adrenaline, but if once he has the continuity, the the confidence comes with it. Yep. Breaking ball being foul. Thought they did too. For everything that can happen to a baseball when it leaves a pitcher's hand, there's a range. There's a range of velocity, there's a range of movement, there's a range of accuracy. And the higher end you are, the higher you are in on the, one of those ranges, you can be at the lower end of that range in the other categories. And so if you have off the charts velocity, you got a chance to get away with less location, less movement. If you got off the charts movement, you can get away with less accuracy, less velocity. But you got to have something at the upper end. And if you got things at the upper end of all the categories of what happens to a baseball when it leaves your hand, that's when you're, you win Cy Youngs. That's when you're Clayton Kershaw. Okay. Just pops out the second. Two away from Melvin Upton Jr. He drives one into the gap in right center, and that is down and will bounce its way to the wall. Norris hustling around third. He'll come in to score on a two-out double from Melvin Upton Jr., his second RBI double of the day. Well, for the Padres, they're going to need Melvin Upton Jr.'s bat to come alive. That's what they were hoping for. He struggled when he was over with the Braves. They brought him over. They are hoping they would come alive. And I'll tell you, for him, that was actually a nice approach on that breaking ball, not pulling off of the ball, staying with it, and driving it the other way. Every one of his movements in his swing used to be bigger. It looks more compact right here in spring today. There's a real tendency to pull off the ball and not keep his balance. But he's looking shorter to the ball right now, more compact. Jabari Blash pinch hitting for Robbie Erlin. He's the guy making some noise in Padres camp. 26 years old. First season in the Padres system, formerly with the Mariners, was a Rule 5 pick. And battling for one of those outfield spots that seem to be solidifying, though. The John Jay in center, Kemp in right, Melvin Upton Jr. in left. Sharply hit past Turner at third. And an RBI base hit for Blash brings in Upton. 10 nothing San Diego. That's one where you just feel like you're a hockey goalie and hopefully you can come up with it. It's hit so hard over there at the hot, why they call it the hot corner for Justin Turner. And I'm going to say, like, you're just saying, well, try to get in front of that. And you're going, listen, sometimes I'm actually just better with my glove to see if I can come up with it, you know, off to the side because it's quicker rather than just in front. And oh, that That's was actually the better way to try and catch it, it right? It, it, it People is. People are going to say, well, why don't they get in front of it? Uh, no, there are, other time, there are other balls. When it's hit that hard it's, hard, it's hard just to jump, move your feet to get in front of it. So you're trying to catch it. Your first instinct is to catch it, not just get in front of it. It's to catch it. And so in order to catch it, you actually put your glove to the side, and it's easier to move that up and down than it is, say, if that glove was in the middle of your body, because when you move it up and down, it's usually into your chest or into your, and your elbow comes into it. So you're off to the side. You hear that kind of, oh, I'm going to try to olay it. A lot of times you're able to come up with the ball that way. No one one on John Jay. Here comes Jamie Wright. It's now they did two. 
anything to the fact that this is spring training. You don't want Justin Upton to take one off his chest. It's absolutely. not like the tying run at third right now. The other time, you know, the times, absolutely. The regular season, <laughs> I don't want right? him to get in front of it. And there are times you actually, you have to remind yourself. There are times like, okay, if I can get in front of it, because there's a man on second, mm -hmm. so I can keep that run in. I'm on John Jay today. Four for four, guys. Four singles. He's got a steering wheel on his bat. Eyeballs on the ball after he hits it. That one found the hole. Four singles in five innings for Jay. He's like, he's like, yeah, and I'll call it a day. There you go. That's good. Yeah. You guys know, yeah, that's four. Four for four. Travis Jankowski is another guy like Jabari Blash trying to break with the big league club trying to get some time in the outfield with the Padres Spangenberg on the ground is second Kendrick has it and gets him to end the inning but the Padres add two more against Jamie Wright it's 10 nothing halfway home in Glendale. Runs on 16 hits for the Padres. Dodgers still searching for their first run of the day on two base hits. You can celebrate the legacy of Jackie Robinson on Friday, April 15th. The Dodgers take on the Giants. First 40,000 fans will get a replica Jackie Robinson jersey presented by Bank of America. Visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Good day for Robbie Erlin. He's finished after four scoreless. And here comes Josh Martin, who spent last year in double-A. Delivers to Corey Brown, ball one. Seventh outing of the spring in Cactus League action for Martin. Facing the bottom third of the Dodgers' order. Brown's 0-for-1 today, grounded his second his first time. First year in the Dodgers system for him. Spent last year in AAA with the Tampa Bay Rays. One more, how many springs did you have as a young player before you made it to the big leagues? Two. And you spent one in big league camp? Or? Mm -hmm. I did. One in minor league camp, one in big league camp. Yes. What was the biggest difference when you came from minor league camp over uh, to big actually, league camp? Actually, you know, I was very lucky. Um, I was, my first one was actually more, I spent it more in the big league camp my very first spring. Wow. So, and I went down in the minors just for like a week, week or two, and then started my minor league season. Brown pops it into foul territory. Salarte in front of the dugout makes a nice play. Here 
come over there. You're not going to get a lot of help from the opposing team's dugout. So you're on your own. And did a nice job running that route along the railing, not creating an angle where he's going to have to worry about the fence. With that angle right there, he knows where the fence is the whole way. Cody Bellinger takes ball one. We've got our first group of subs today. Alex Dickerson in the left. Jankowski after pinch hitting stays in the game and plays center. Alexi Amarista is at short. Eric Kratz doing the catching for Josh Martin. Who falls behind Bellinger 2-0. Got our first group of subs and we've reached the point of the game where Oral stops trying to keep up. I am keep not score, keeping right? score anymore. <laughs> Come on now, Oral. No more. You did all nine innings yesterday, right? I, I kept score. Ball. I did. Well, I, I'm here when, for Oral. That's why. When the inning was over, Joe, he would just look over at your book and copy. Copy down. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Uh, I saw what he did. Give out my secrets, Oral. <laughs> Four pitch walk to Bellinger. It was aboard with one away here in the fifth. I either did my homework or didn't do it. I didn't copy. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Wow. And in this case. And the late innings didn't. Exactly. Here's Willie Calhoun. Out of the nine spot. Taking ball one. Rats out to talk with Martin. 26 years old. Out of Enterprise, Alabama. Went to Samford University in Birmingham. He's drafted by the Indians now in his first season in the Padres organization. He's put up pretty good numbers over the last few years in the minors between high A and double A. It's 1 0 to Willie Calhoun. Two balls, no strikes. Was there a dose of nerves, Nomar, coming over in the big league camp? And then just move right into game face and you're fine. No, there was always nerves, of course. A lot of the nerves, you didn't want to get in the veteran's way. Yeah. <laughs> How to maneuver around the locker room right. or in the bench? Yes. It's like me with you guys. Trying to stay out of your way. There you go. See? Yep. But he does have a scorebook with his name on it. I <laughs> tweeted that out. You did. No secret anymore. No. <laughs> what goes on in the broadcast booth stays in the broadcast booth unless it's tweeted out. <laughs> yeah, words to live <laughs> yeah. by. Yeah. <laughs> Just know that you're that safe. Early. You're safe here. Yeah, it's comforting. Thank you. <laughs> Fine scorebook. Hey, Joe. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I use it all nine innings, too. Yeah. Well, we know that. I know that because I copy <laughs> you it. You copy it, yeah. Who in the organization got you that nice scorebook? Oh, that's a shout out to Eric Braverman. Eric Braverman. Thank you, boss, for getting Nomar and I that nice scorebook with our name on it. I when that follow up was coming. All right. No, don't worry about it. We'll, we got the Sharpie. We can just write our name on the one we bought. <laughs> <laughs> was that your welcome aboard gift? I think it was. Was it wrapped uh -huh. with a bow on it? Yeah, I did have a nice note from Eric. It said, don't tell Nomar and Oral. <laughs> The scorebook tells me Howie Kendrick is one for two today. Singled in the third. <laughs> That's here with a runner at first. Two gone in the fifth inning. I should have hashtagged Eric Braverman in the tweet. Yeah. If you really wanted to know, though, you would have tagged him. Right. Oh, tagged that sign. See, I don't know yeah. this. Yet. Yeah. Right. See? God, we need a young guy in here to teach Thank us these God things. Got a Gosh, you're on it. Doing what I can to bring you guys Woo. along. <laughs> Kendrick bangs a base hit into right. Bellinger will hold on at second. Howie Kendrick has looked especially good these couple days. He really has, and that's that's his style. Staying inside the ball, going the other way. That's what he's done his entire career. And you know, we talked about him coming dealing with that groin in spring training. Veterans know themselves. They know how many at-bats. They know how, what kind of work they want to get in. 
and for Howie, it seems like he's look, thinking, okay, there's two weeks. I got to start ramping it up now. He knows himself when he's really going, okay, give me, I mean, even look, get how many at bats I really need. You know, let me start really getting in that game mode for opening day. Now, see, I'll plead one for two or 0 for one with a walk and take strike one. Walked on four pitches his last time up. He's got an outfield assist today as well. Cutting a runner down at third back in the first inning. It's on this 0 1 from Josh Martin. Two back to back breaking balls, none of them wide. And what Yasiel has to learn on that mental side of it is showing that he got a breaking ball for a strike, a breaking ball down the middle that he swung and missed at. Now, if the pitcher stays with it, it's probably going to be a chase one. He's probably not going to get a strike one. He got a piece of whatever it was and pulled it a little bit wide of the back. From reaching it, reach for it. You know, I was talking about how he casts a little bit. See how his arms really go out. And I know that one was away, so he's reaching it. But sometimes you think, look, where's the hand inside? And so you know, it just kind of, hopefully, you know, we always see Yasiel grabbing something. You always worry, like, is he okay? Is it, you know, no. did he hurt something? So kind of reach for his side there. I just like to see his hand stay a little bit closer to his body, then explode through the ball. So when should the arms extend well, after contact? Well, it's also that was out in front. So they have a tendency to extend because he was out in front with that off speed. But it's just a matter of the approach where they don't when he's about to hit the ball. That is they don't start extending away from his body like they stay closer to his body and then through the hitting zone to drive the ball. It's in a one two. It lays off one that Martin tried to get him to chase. Runners take off. And they throw to the back runner. Both are safe. Bellinger at third. Kendrick at second. A good aggressive base running there. Reading the breaking ball in the dirt. And then Howie Kendrick had to read the runner in front of him before he goes. So he can't immediately go until he watches the runner in front of him. But in the peripheral vision sees that Bellinger's going. And Gets there in the nick of time. And he also recognized that he got a late jump and that he's going to have to go in there hard, head first, that there was going to be a play on him. Heavy breaking balls from Martin to Puig so far. Two balls and two strikes with two gone here in the fifth. Dodgers trying to get on the board. Grounded to short. Amarista on the move. Throws out Puig to end the inning. A walk and a base hit, but the Dodgers leave him at second and third. We go to the six.
and goodness, this is spring training game. It's not been pretty for the Dodgers. 10 0 on to the sixth. Time for our Carl Scam replay. Let's go back to the Howie Kendrick swing on his last base hit. Well, you look from the side here when the ball's coming in. One, he's balanced as he's driving through, but the hands are staying back. And then they explode through the zone, and he's thinking about driving it the other way. And he's catching it. You always talk about, well, let the ball travel a little bit. He did. He does let that ball travel. Now it's not way back in his stance, but at the same time, he's not out in front and lunging for the ball. It allows him to drive it the other way. Shin Hui Sao comes in. The fourth Dodgers pitcher of the day on a day that began with Mike Bolsinger being scratched for abdominal tightness. Brandon Hicks into the game at second base. Jack Murphy catching now. South faces Matt Kemp, who lines out to Justin Turner. Hot corner, and sometimes they come one hop, and you'd have to protect yourself other times they come in the air and it's a little easier to catch Justin Turner with a nice glove save there as you talked about it being a hockey goalie yeah, at times at times you feel like it there's Will Myers one for three today taking strike one strikeout in the first inning RBI single in the second and another strikeout in the fourth Dealt with wrist injuries over the last couple of years. Played only 60 games last year. His first one in San Diego. And he is a guy that they desperately need to get healthy and be a key part of this lineup. Hundred and thirty seven games total the last two years for those wrist problems all started with an outfield collision while he was in Tampa with Desmond Jennings and there's surgery that followed bone spur developed so limited to 87 games two years ago and then those 60 last year it's an 0-2 from Sal when you heard about him down there in Tampa Bay, you were they were thinking like the second coming of Evan Longoria. They were thinking we've got another one, big time player. And it just hasn't panned out yet for Will, but there's a lot of talent in that body. At one point was the top prospect in baseball, guys. If you remember when Kansas City dealt him to Tampa. The front office and KC just got hammered for doing that. But the fans were all over him. How in the world could you trade away the future? It's turned out okay for the Royals. Got Wade Davis in that deal. That one beats the shift. Right past Brandon Hicks. And Myers will motor his way into second on a ball that was absolutely pounded. I think that's an example of why there was so much publicity behind Will Myers because when it does come off his bat when he squares the ball up it just jumps I mean that ball great hands. Hit, line drive and that ball scolded the other piece of that deal was James Shields who of course is now his teammate here in San Diego Wade Davis was almost a throw in not really a throw in but he wasn't the key piece of the deal he's wound up being as important Kansas City's run these last two years as anyone. Another guy that Kansas City dealt to Tampa in that trade, Jake Odorizzi, who's turned into a really nice major league starting pitcher. So it wound up that he was probably the piece, at least thus far, that Kansas City most regrets getting rid of. When you think of Kansas City, you think of that outstanding bullpen. Mm -hmm. And they were the number one bullpen last year with a 2.69 ERA. A lot of clubs focusing on strengthening their bullpens when the world champions have such a good one. 
year before that it was the San Francisco Giants in 14 and they had a 3.01 and they were the third best bullpen in the league. And then an anomaly the year before when the Red Sox won in 13 they had the 10th best bullpen but their postseason ERA was a 1.28 so they rose to the occasion that bullpen. Two and two on Salarte who's over to two today. There's his first base hit. A missile past the glove of Bellinger into the corner. It will score the pinch runner Nick Noonan from second and a double from young Hervis Salarte. Evan Ahart, the right fielder, had a hard time digging it out of there. That was a good swing right there, and Evan Arhate is going after this ball in a hurry to limit the batter runner from getting a double. He knows he's not going to be able to get the runner in second at home, but trying to keep Salarte from getting the second base and the anxiousness had the bobble. And Rosales comes in as a pinch runner at second. And Derek Norris comes up for the fourth time already with a couple hits today. Don't make that Eric Kratz, who checked in for him defensively last inning. And Kratz flies one lazily into right. Alexi Amarista. It's a defensive replacement for Alexi Ramirez. His first trip up. Entering his sixth year potentially with big league time. Fifth one with the Padres. Debuted with the Angels. Handful of games in 2011, 2012. He was a starter for this team at shortstop when last year began, but the worst offensive numbers of his career. The play time diminishes the year went on. And at the lowest marks in just about every offensive category of any shortstop that qualified in the entire National League. So it's part of the reason the Padres had to go out and address that shortstop position. Alexi Ramirez, the answer to it. Getting him from the White Sox on that one year deal. Amarista with a high drive down the right field line that hooks his way off of the wall for a base hit. In to score is Rosales, and Amarista's got a double. Tomorrow today, Dodger pitchers are not fooling any of these Padre hitters. I mean, that ball was just on the inner half. Amarista brings the hands in and just drives that to right field. It's a combination of two things, as you know, when offense gets contagious. Yes, the pitchers are making bad pitches, but the hitters start to gain so much confidence. Once they get that one hit under their belt, it's a completely different attitude when they step into the box. They, start, they, they can't wait to go to that batter's box or grab their bat, get on the on-deck circle and say, please, let me let me get let me get in there. Well, one of the tools of a big leaguer, as you know, is, you know, when you have that 0 for 2 and you're going up for your third at bat, can you go into the box with that good attitude like you're 2 for 2? Or are you the kind of guy that you spiral downhill and you don't have that mental tool to kind of kick start it back into action? So many different separators at this level. That it takes so much ability to get here, but once you step onto this big league field, it's all about the same ability. You know, it's a lot closer to the ability range. The mental side really can make the difference. A ball and two strikes on Alex Dickerson, who's in for Melvin Upton Jr., who doubled twice today. Two of the 19 San Diego hits. Two and two. Oh, 
encouraging day for Padres team that at this point has the worst record in the spring. Either league 4 12 and 2 coming in. That's far from a reflection typically of the big league roster. A lot of times those records in spring guys match up with the upper levels of the minors and how good the system is. If the two big league rosters in their first three to five innings as the innings get built play evenly then you start a game in the fifth or sixth inning when the kids start coming in and you start to see uh, whose kids are best. Dickerson on the ground is second. Brandon Hicks will throw him out to end this inning. Third consecutive frame the Padres plate two. 12 nothing San Diego. at L.A. is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. Luis Perdomo into the game to pitch for the Padres. Trying to hold on to this 12-0 lead. And the six. Look at the scoreboard right now. If you're coming into the game, you know you're from A ball last season. This is about an opportunity to shine. Come in, throw and strike, show your best stuff. Have an edge. Don't worry about 12 to nothing. Justin Turner is set to lead off the inning. 0 oh, for 2 today with a ground out and a strikeout. His fourth game officially of Cactus League action. He's him back. He's been here at Camelback Ranch for a long time, rehabbing the knee, almost two months now. So Justin, no doubt, getting excited for camp to break. And extra excited considering he's been here as long as he has. He has definitely put the work in since the surgery and really had no bumps in the road. They've held him back. He's felt really, really good throughout the rehab. And the surgery on his left knee October 22nd. The plan was to just remove some loose bodies, but when they went in there, took a look at the knee, they also saw that there was the microfracture, the cartilage. They repaired that. But it was that repair that led to the longer rehab for him and the slower start to this spring as far as how frequently he's playing Career your last year for him hit 294 Career high in RBIs home runs played in a career high number of games too there's new problems he's dealt with across his career exacerbated some because of it After he began the year is kind of a super utility man 
moved into the starting role in mid May. He was one of the best hitters in the National League. And has a base hit to right. Because of right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we talk about Jock Peterson in the high late kick, right? There's a balance when that late kick comes down. And Justin Turner has a high late kick as well, but he's able to keep the body back even with that high late kick, and there's still a balance to it. He even has enough to go out there. That was a really good breaking pitch. And stays on it, just pokes it outside, pokes it out there. Difference too with that big leg kick. It's not a huge, big, violent swing, which we often see That's Jaws was, get into yep. too. That's what I was going to say. If you watch his swing, Ooh. Ooh. Brian Hernandez will get first. His his leg kick is moving separate from the rest of his body, so mm -hmm. nothing else on his body is really moving. Right. It's really calm, and so the leg kick is a timing device. As we watch TK wear one in the ribs. That will leave a mark. So two on with nobody out to begin this sixth inning for the Dodgers. And Brandon Hicks comes up for the first time. And A.J. Ellis is spotted the order. Hicks cracks the liner that gets over Wheat's head and into right center. Turner had to wait to make sure the ball got through. He moves to third. And they're loaded up for Jack Peterson. Two different reads on that ball right there. Justin Turner freezes, and Kike Hernandez, from his angle, could read that it was going to get over the second baseman's head, which was a tougher angle for Justin Turner. So they just go station to station. You see the two different base running. Justin going back, and Kike going forward. That shows you the angle that they're both seeing it from a chance for Peterson to get the Dodgers on the board here in the sixth inning one for two today with a single and a strikeout Luis Perdomo starts him with strike one any tricks of the trade no more on base running there when you're on second or first reading those line drives well, instant when you know it's a line drive your instinct is a freeze you're always hot freeze on a line drive just to make sure Peterson in row two hole. Josh Martin got him with a big curve in his last at bat. So Luis Perdomo goes to here with an 0-2 count. The base is loaded. Nobody out in the six. Fastball away, one and two. As soon as you said that, Joe, about let's see what he goes to with the pitch selection, my mind immediately went to let's see what Jock goes to with the approach yeah. to an 0-2 pitch. That's what I've been watching right now. I've been just looking at Jock, you know, his hands. We talked about how upright, how many still strides. I'm looking at the way his head kind of goes down, too, with that stride, changes the eye level. So it's definitely still a work in progress. It's a pretty good take right there because his weight was still back, at least. He wasn't committed where we've seen him take and then be out of balance. Perdomo to Peterson with a 2 2. Jock down swinging. And again, down in a breaking ball. One away. He comes back with that breaking ball. We talked about that. We saw that in the strikeout before. He just kind of lunge out of it. You know, and we, it we was talked a about this. Ball too. It was a very good breaking ball. It's going to get a lot of people lunging and swinging and miss at it. We talked about still. I still look at Jog, those hands being up there. And there's really, even with two strikes, sometimes people want to shorten up to think about contact, and there's no difference. And that's what we talked about Jock in the past, that there hasn't been 
you know, it's one thing with the strikeouts, but you can't tell if you were to watch them just from the side. You can't tell the difference if there was a count. It'd be the same, like as if it was the same count all the time. If he had two strikes or not, it'd be the same big swing all the time. Corey Brown pulls the base hit into right. And look at the Dodgers on the board. Hernandez right behind Turner on a two-run single from Brown. Good job by Corey Brown. I mean, that ball was tailing away from him, and he stays on it, keeps the head down, takes the barrel to the ball, and he ends up pulling it to the right side. Good job picking up your team. You know, especially after you get the bases loaded, nobody out, the guy in front of you punches out, can kind of feel like you got the wind taken out of your sail, and then comes back, and it's nice. Two RBIs. It's fifth and sixth. Cactus League action. Cody Bellinger now with the runners at the corners and one away. He takes off. Brown will take second. Working my way up in first. I'm able to go first, second, and go last year. But now that I, if Monday works out, and then give me more work for the I mean, with Jock, we talked about, you know, spinning off the ball and lunging. But Corey Brown here, he's kind of tall, but notice how he stays. The upper body stays on the ball. It's not spinning off. So even when the ball was going away, and even if that were happened to be a breaking pitch, he still would have enough behind it to stay on it and get the barrel to the ball just like he did. Back foot breaker to Bellinger. One ball, two strikes. You're talking about changing the approach with two strikes. There are some guys, and, and a guy that comes right to mind was one of the best two-strike hitters in baseball last year, and Anthony Rizzo in Chicago. He will literally, and we're talking about a slugger, he chokes up two to three inches on the bat, like you see in, you know, in Little League guys do sometimes. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, gets by the catcher, and charging home his hits, making it a 12-3 game. Break the ball right here. I'll say that ball needs to be blocked. You reach out there, assume you can get it, and you don't get down. Close the tailgate. That one run around the car or the truck. But get down there and gain some ground on that ball and block it. Two and two on Bellinger now with Brown at third. One gone in the six. Here comes Perdomo. Bellinger sees the count go full. In the start at first base today with Scott Van Slyke out with a minor hip flexor strain and Adrian Gonzalez down with Team Mexico for another night. They take on Nicaragua tonight. Final World Baseball Classic qualifier. I thought this was a three-man booth, and I think it's turned it into like a six or seven. Did you hear that? Hear those conversations? <laughs> yeah. Down by the field. Another payoff. Bellinger down swinging. Rodomo with his second punch out of the frame, and two gone. I'm looking forward to Alana when she hustles back here to the field because I know she was attending some things where she was gathering some information with Mike Bolsing. So it'll be good to hear from her soon. Yusniel Diaz now. Brown at third and two gone in the six. If you're just joining us, Mike Bolsinger was scheduled to start this game and our whole story off of the top was not just start this game, but maybe solidify his position in the rotation as the five starter going into the season, but scratched right before first pitch with some abdominal tightness. Last word we had gotten from the Dodgers. Alana trying to track down more information. It'll be big time information, hopefully good news because 
Mike was going to be slotted, I think, in that competition, but really was the front runner to be the number five guy. Diaz with a nice piece of hitting. RBI single to right for Yusniel Diaz and the Dodgers with a four spot here in the six. Good job by Diaz on this pitch right here. That ball is going on the inner half, coming in on him. And he just he doesn't pull off of the ball, he stays on it. That's what I was going to say. You see the front side clear, the hip and the front shoulder, but you don't see the head and the balance move at all. That's no. where they are locked in. And the other thing, you can watch. And it's good from that, and I saw it a lot from shortstop. You see the camera angle from center field coming in, and it's, it's not directly in center field. It's kind of offset. But you can see, remember as shortstop, I can see guys bat path to the ball through the hitting zone. Sometimes they just naturally cast out right away from their body. You see the hands and the bat away from the body as they're about to hit. And that one, you didn't see the hands get away from his body. They were kind of still hidden. And then the barrel comes through the zone. That's what we're talking about, how the, it stays through that. When I say Yasiel, for example, can get a little long, Jock can get a little long, you actually see those hands get away from their body early before the bat gets through the zone. Eighth man to bat in this inning is Devin Ahar. Bounces by. The second goes Diaz. Rodgers only had three hits over the first five innings. Nothing to show for it. Four hits in this inning alone. Second guy wearing zero we've seen for the Dodgers today. Jeremy Kurt, starting pitcher, was double zero. is bad and a bouncer to Weeks. Dodgers get their first four runs of the day. Bringing eight men to the plate to get on the board. We go to the seventh. Dave Dodgers down 12 to 4 here as, a, as we make our way to the top of the seventh inning. A quick update for you as far as Mike Bolsinger is concerned. I had an opportunity to talk to him after he received treatment. He said he was throwing in the pen, warming up to make the start today. Threw a curveball and felt a tweak in his left side as far as his abdomen region is concerned. He threw a couple of more pitches and it was still there. He immediately called it. He said he would do the same thing even if it was a regular season game. He said it's not something that he's felt before. Not overly concerned about it. He said the biggest 
frustration is he's no he knows that he's under that microscope trying to make that fifth spot as far as the starting rotation is concerned he said he just wants to get back out here he said that they will talk about it tomorrow morning see how he feels not overly concerned with that abdominal tightness guys all right alana meanwhile pedro baez comes in for the dodgers It's good that he's not overly concerned about that, for sure. And good that they were cautious. Jose Perella's first at bat of the day. It starts with the fastball strike from Baez. One of the guys the Dodgers are counting on in that bullpen. Not a ton of changes to it in the offseason. Signed Joe Blanton, Lewis Coleman, Jamie Wright, both trying to make the roster as new additions, but. I as one of the guys are hoping to take a step forward here in 2016 for him. Well, you think about the three division titles in a row, but the three performances by those bullpens of those three years, 3.87, 3.80, and 3.49, and that ranked 11th, 12th, and 9th in the league over the last few years. So you win the division, but then you look at the bullpen and you say, you know what, to get this thing over the top, that might be a place where we really need to focus as so many of those playoff games and the crucial games in September come down to one run games from the seventh, eighth, and ninth that you've got to squeak across one run or shut down the opponent. Upstairs to Perella. Of course, it had been reported that the Dodgers were going to acquire Roldis Chapman during the offseason before the details came out about the domestic violence. The Dodgers wound up deciding not to sign him. Yankees did. Eventually, suspension passed down to begin the season for Chapman in New York. And so the Dodgers kind of had to reinvent the strategy that they headed into the offseason with when at the winter meetings, that plan fell through you are so right and that's when people go back and in retrospect and kind of inspect how general managers and presidents of ball clubs do with the acquisition of players they they forget that they're they're viewing the past in it where it's still it's a still picture but when it's happening it's a moving train it is a ongoing moving train where one free agent goes off the board, and now you get your bid in on the other guy, and now all of a sudden he goes off the board, but then you get to sign this guy, and it's not plan A, plan B, and plan C. It's plan A morphed, it's plan B morphed, and it just, it's ongoing. And this roster is, of course, not finished. And rarely ever do you go into an offseason and then enter the next season with the exact thing you had drawn on your whiteboard in those conference rooms at the winter meetings having been executed. I was associate general manager for the Texas Rangers and was up in that front office for a while and then became their pitching coach. And, you know, you are always making plans and you are always evaluating what direction you can go. So you weren't using a permanent marker on the whiteboard? Is what you're saying? Uh, <laughs> I was just lucky to hold the marker. <laughs> but, yeah, you, you are always making studies and plans. And if we go this way, what happens? And if this guy goes down... waiver claims and things coming out of spring training here in the next week or so as people start to trim their rosters and guys that don't have options will all of a sudden become available and you evaluate those guys that are available against the guys you have in camp. Travis Jankowski follows it off his foot. And another one that had been reported was that Hisashi Wakuma was going to become a Dodger, but Problems with the physical. That deal didn't go through. That was before the Kenta Maeda signing. It's just really fascinating to look at, you know, the trickle-down effect and kind of the butterfly effect of mm -hmm. each move that wasn't. And that's across baseball. That's not just the Dodgers that we're dealing with those things. Happens everywhere, and it's just part of the game. A 
think early indications are here and of course it's just spring training but Kenta Maeda signing is you know, something the Dodgers are feeling good about with the way he's performed thus far in spring training. Yeah, he has been a pleasant surprise for Dave Roberts and Andrew Friedman and Farhan Zaidi and all the Dodger establishment front office. They have really loved the fact the way that he has come in. He's adapted to the culture. He's trying to pick up English. He's got a great personality. Yeah. Just the way he greeted us in the, the breakfast room today, the food room. We were introduced to him for the first time since we kind of newcomers to camp here. And friendly handshake and a smile and an attempt to speak English with us was fantastic. Pedro Baez comes home with the 2 2. It bounces in. There goes full on Jankowski. Right, a two time winner of the Japanese League's version of the Cy Young Award, including last year. Really nice numbers over there. Those numbers you never expect to translate exactly to the major league level, but they've been time and time again proven examples of guys succeeding there and coming to the bigs and succeeding here. It's getting easier and easier for scouts and front offices to evaluate how they will translate over here, though. With more and more people coming from that league, so. It's really a world game, isn't it, now? Yeah. Which is great. I mean, we talk about that because we, you know, Adrian Gonzalez is gone because you got the World Baseball Classic coming up. Yeah. Now, I'm sure there's a formula now just like there is to kind of equate an ERA in the American League compared to the ERA in the National League. How they used to have the differential and you multiply it by 1.3 if you were in the National League. And that would give you your American League ERA or you would divide it down if you were on the American League side and you were coming over to the National League. So who knows? They've probably got enough statistics now and waiting to, to see how that would play over here. As walks Jankowski, you mentioned the World Baseball Classic making this a more global game. You there's a World Baseball Classic, really, where Maeda jumped on the Major yeah. League Baseball team's radar. It's 2013. He said that he wanted a chance to see how he stacked up with Major League hitters. 15 innings he pitched in 2013 in the Classic and gave up one earned run. That was when radars went off here in the States that Maeda might be a guy they should take a longer look at. The Carp, the team that he played for, posted him officially this last year. Dodgers wound up signing him to a really unique deal. No risk, high reward. Two and on Jamil Weeks. Part of the development of Pedro Baez on the mound. Here we are, the 18th pitch with only one out is pounding that strike zone a little bit more and really becoming more efficient on the mound so that he's at peace in the bullpen that you can use on a back-to-back -back nights where he's not overworked the first night. Well, we've seen that from Baez when he comes in in the game. And, you know, and then this game's different. I mean, obviously, spring training, the Padres have put up 12 runs on the board, but we've seen it throughout the course of a season. He comes in, the game all of a sudden slows down. And that also gets your infielders and guys behind you almost on their heels. If you're not coming in out of the open, throwing strikes, taking a little while, guys get on. The rhythm just changes. Back to back walks. The Jankowski in now weeks and two on with one away. He just missed them by a little right now. Matt Hurd just trotting out to the mound to have a little visit. Not his typical pitching coach like Rick Honeycutt, but Matt on the same page. He and Rick, I'm sure, met before the game on different things. And right here, it's pretty much you've got good stuff, and let's just fill the strike zone up and see what happens. By his entering his third major league season. Debuted in 2014 with a game in May against Washington and went back down back up for a game in July back down again and back up for the stretch run in the last year his first full major league season. 
Strike one to Ryan Schimpf. Just misses again, two and two on Ryan Schimpf. Now you're at pitch 24 and you're missing arm side high, and that can start to tell you that there might be some fatigue. And I'm sure the Dodgers are going to protect Petey out there and not let this get out of hand as far as pitch count. He's definitely gotten his exercise today. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. Over the inside edge, nice tailing action to it for strike three. Adjustment where he gets back on top, gets in line here, and forces the ball to the inner half of the plate. And it really is a force when you've been missing high arm side and kind of spin it out of your mechanics. You really have to force yourself consciously to do some things that normally come natural, and that's part of the toolbox that you learn as a young pitcher of how to make that adjustment. Nick Noonan came into the game partway through as a defensive replacement. Singleton scored his first time off. And again, Baez misses arm side high. Ball one. That ball really just slipped right out of his hand. And it was signed as a third baseman back in 07 out of the Dominican Republic. Went to the Futures game as a third baseman a couple of years later before he converted to pitcher probably about four years ago now. To pop up on the infield. Will it stay in play? Yes, but off of the glove of Diaz or Christian Gomez at third. And Christian Gomez did a good job, first of all, getting there and calling off the catcher. We saw Murphy had a beat on it, but it's a tough angle for the catcher, so it's always a third baseman if he can call him off. And it looked like he had it. The only thing he did here was he just missed it at the end. That was it. It looked like he took his eye off of it right at the end there right there and he missed it but everything else he did a good job getting to it getting to the ball and calling off the catcher how about the shades on the brim of the cap uh, i don't know if that was i hear but i don't think the sun caused it he okay. just missed it because right. <laughs> it didn't look like he was shading his eyes or looking like oh i didn't see it how about this arizona sunshine though They're playing here with a bright blue sky got to be tough on some of those pop-ups right yeah definitely i mean it's definitely tough it's bright but did you miss a lot of them, Nomer? You know, I didn't like. I couldn't play with. Sh I, I wear the sh flip downs. Yeah. yeah, that's the way. I, 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 so you like I the have, really dark, dark. Sunglasses? Well, it had nothing to do with being dark. I just had when I, I had no depth perception when I would wear sunglasses. So I'd probably have them on the top of my hat just because they look cool. <laughs> <laughs> Where the flip downs flip down actually down. on and the no, shades I, up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear both. It was one <laughs> or the other, but. Uh, having the shades out there, you know, maybe when I was practicing, but I could not wear sunglasses in a game because my depth perception was off. Were there any spots, any ballparks where there was a particularly bad time of day to play at a certain spot for you? Oh, yeah. Actually, Dodger, <laughs> Dodger Stadium. Uh -huh. <laughs> day days. games at Dodger Stadium is tough, especially when they, they change the seats behind home plate. Made it really, really tough. Newton hits one to second. Brandon Hicks will throw him out. And in the inning. Pedro Baez with a scoreless frame. Stretch time in Glendale.
12 runs on 19 hits for the Padres. Dodgers with a four spot of the six. Uh, there's seven hits today. And spring training baseball is live with the MLB.com app, Bad App. You can stay connected all spring. Radio broadcasts, video highlights, and plenty more. Download the MLB.com at Bad App, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Joe Davis with Nomar Garcia Parra, Oral Hershiser, Alana Rizzo down in the field today. And Jack Murphy leading off this inning with a solidly hit base hit to right. Jack Murphy with a really good swing there and the best mustache in camp. A little goatee developing there, huh? Yeah. See? Not like his picture in the in the media guide and what they had to show up there when he came up. I mean, is it just mustache? It's in that just picture? it's just mustache and clean chin and the hair flowing and yeah. Hey, if it works, got a single. Here's Brendan Davis. So the game defensively is short for the Dodgers. And Abbott is first at bat of the day here out of the three spot. First of two meetings between these Teams is spring. They'll meet again on March 29th. And then an opening day two weeks from tomorrow. First of a bunch between the teams this season. Look out and a hot shot up into the seats. Looks like everybody's okay. It's a harmless souvenir. Rook, you're getting your reps in this game. That I am. You are, you know, we're playing two today. I hope not, too. This one will do. <laughs> Technically, we are, right? Because you got the split squad game going on up the road. But don't you think this one will do? This one's this enough today. One, definitely filling the time uh -huh. of two. Yeah. It's exciting. By the time this one ends, you have the guys probably coming back from the road. <laughs> yeah. The other game. They might beat them. Get the ball's gap. ripped into the left center field gap for Brendan Davis. Overrunning the ball to left was Brown, and Murphy's going to score all the way from first. Strap, young man. It's that fastball stays on it nicely. I know we're talking about these games kind of being long in spring training but there are to certain guys they're not long they're glad they're this long because they get in there such as Brendan Davis and there you got Murphy hustling around get an opportunity here at the big league field to show what they have yeah. officially ruled an RBI double yeah, there's a bouncing ball to second fielded by Weeks Throw him out. The third goes Davis. After the play comes Hicks. Doing this, by the way, against a new San Diego pitcher, both in the game and this year, Casey Jansen, who has pitched nine big league seasons. First eight of them with the Blue Jays and then spent last year with the Nationals. And now in his first year in San Diego. Dick Singleton scored last inning. Cuts through a breaking ball. Strike one. To fourth round pick back in 04. Made his big league debut in 2006 for Toronto. Hicks pops it to right. Jose Perella sizes it up, makes the catch. Davis tags and holds. And Perella shows off a nice arm. One bounce into the plate, two gone. That is a very nice throw. When you don't short hop your catcher, you decide whether you're going to go all the way in the air or give him a nice pop. Get behind the ball. Showing off the arm. 
nobody on. Just nice one hop. Perfect. Okay, good job. Correct side of the plate. And Woodward over there to hold up the runner and not send him in. Down by seven. You've got to make sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no question. We're unloading the uh, wide receiver numbers. In the late innings. Christian Gomez batting for the first time today. With Davis at third and two gone. And Gomez sends a fly ball into center. Travis Jankowski there to put it away and bring an end to the seventh. But the Dodgers add one and a double from Brendan Davis scoring Jack Murphy on to the eighth. Arizona. Coming up not too long from now. This team will break camp in less than two weeks and open the season on a Monday in San Diego. It's two weeks from tomorrow. That guy will be on the mound, Clayton Kershaw. Then they'll head to San Francisco, opening day at home for the Giants. Dodgers home opener comes against Paul Goldschmidt and the D-backs on April 12th. The Dodgers Stadium, a few days later, celebrate Jackie Robinson Day, not just in L.A., but across Major League Baseball. In the very early Jackie Robinson days while Dave Roberts was a player in San Diego. The very first couple of days that they did that, they just had instead of everybody wearing 42, a select player or two on each team down 42. And Dave Roberts was the one who did it for the Padres. Mariano Rivera, the last one to wear it as an active player. That's quite an honor. Jacob Rehm comes into the game here. The fifth pitcher for the Dodgers today. Pretty good numbers in the minors last year with a sub-3 ERA. He gets Rosales to pop out to begin the inning. Second trip up there for Eric Kratz. Fly to right his first time and takes strike one. You want to make a good impression on your team right now and you're a pitcher. You come in and you throw strikes. You pound the strike zone. And if you get them out, even more.
Padres got six runs in the second inning today, then added two in the fourth, two in the fifth, two in the sixth. And there's a base hit to left for Kratz. The 20th hit of the day for San Diego. The team trying to snap a string of five consecutive losing seasons. Last year they made all those moves during the offseason. A.J. Preller's first year as the GM and then won three fewer games than they had the year before. It's been 10 years since their last postseason trip. Now those back-to-back -back West Division titles in 05 and 06 haven't been back since. Hoping the new manager Andy Green can start to help turn things around. Everybody talks about a new culture change. Especially when you get a new manager. The Dodgers have seen that with Dave Roberts. There's been a lot of energy in the Dodger camp. Same thing in San Diego with him. 38 years old. Last year was with the Diamondbacks as their third base coach. Before that was a minor league manager in the Diamondback system. In fact, followed Dodgers hitting coach Turner Ward as the manager at the AA level. The Mobile, Alabama. The Mobile Bay Bears. Here is with Mark McGuire. San Diego this year. With Mark being the bench coach over there, puts him on more of a path to maybe become a big league manager. Now 52 years old, been a hitting coach, of course. And now changing roles and moving to the bench coach, so building a resume that will lead him to some managerial interviews. He's been away for much of spring training. His wife had gotten ill, so right after he arrived at camp, he had to head off and just return last week. Amarista flies out to left. And two gone here in the eighth inning. Much quieter offseason for San Diego this time around. You know, last year they brought in Kemp and Shields and Will Myers. Justin Upton, Derek Norris, Middlebrooks, Kimbrell. The list goes on. This year they added Alexi Ramirez and Fernando Rodney, John Jay, but real big splashes. They find themselves now kind of caught between what was going all in last year during the offseason and what probably needs to be a bit of a rebuild with some pieces that are still movable after these few moves this offseason. When you get those big name players and then they happen to leave though you do get some compensation draft picks so in the midst of of re Bringing in the big name free agents with resumes that the pieces really didn't fit together and really kind of falling on their face They have kind of been able to get back some other players into the minor league system when the draft comes around Flight into center for Yusniel Diaz and that is the inning on to the bottom of the eighth at Camelback Ranch in a 12-5 ball game.
upcoming Dodgers schedule. They'll take on the Mariners tomorrow, and we're back on the air on Sportsnet LA Tuesday night. That'll be you all with Charlie Steiner. I'll be back on Thursday, and then Friday, Vin Scully calls Dodgers Giants from Scottsdale. Lana Rizzo will be here all week long. She's the only one that's been at spring training as long as uh, Justin Turner was here rehabbing. She's here every day, even if there isn't a yeah. game. Rain, snow, or sleet, she is like the mailman. <laughs> Kevin Quackenbush comes in. Pitched to 57 games a year ago. I don't know if Alana wanted to be compared to a mailman, but but I know your point, though. Her right. work she ethic. Is Her work Absolutely. Yeah. She walks about as far as a mailman as yeah, she goes true. to each different place that she has to rendezvous with one of the players or the manager or someone. Corey Brown leads off this eighth inning for the Dodgers. He's one for three today. Brought in a pair with a single last inning. Or two innings ago, back in the sixth. Played 39 big league games over the course of a few seasons, mostly with the Nationals. Had one at bat with the Red Sox in 14. So he was saying how it's been made extra comfortable here in his first year in Dodgers camp because of some familiar faces from his journey to get to this point, especially while he was with the Red Sox in that minor league system. Assistant hitting coach Tim Hires was there. George Lombard, who's now the Dodgers' first base coach, was part of the Boston Red Sox organization. And Brown was drafted by the A's while Bob Guerin was the manager there. So he had some time in big league camp in Oakland. We got to know Bob through that route. If you're around long enough, you're going to see almost everybody. Right. But it does make it more comfortable when familiar faces are there because you go to ask those awkward questions about anything that goes on around the locker room or the dugout. What is this culture like? What is taken as a norm? Brackenbush drops in a breaking ball to strike him out for the first out of the eighth. Kevin Quackenbush. Just thinking of Corey Brown, you're talking about what he's done. That reminds me, and I wonder if he's kind of replacing remember, Chris Heisey last year and mm -hmm. you know, kind of that outfielder that they were calling up here and there. And he had quite the round trip tickets from Oklahoma City to L.A. Ball one to Cody Bellinger. the new culture in baseball of having more of a revolving door on your locker room as far as the roster moves and, you know if you're a minor leaguer it's got to give you a little bit more hope that you got a chance to break in and show your wares you know when rosters used to break with 25 and you know teams maybe only use 28 to 32 players in a year depending on what moves they had to make but now you might see 50, 50 players, mm -hmm. you know, get a shot at the big league level, get a taste, get a cup of coffee. Dodgers set a franchise record last year. 55 players used. Included that game in Colorado in September. The teams combined to set a big league record. 58 players used in one game. Do you guys have that one? Is that you too? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the score sheet was like the spring training game. I actually kept, <laughs> so I kept keeping score. Yeah. That one. I have to. It's a regular season game. Uh -huh. This I'm, I'm kind of like a regular down here. I, I start with two innings, three innings, and then I build up to five. And right. Then, and then by the time the regular season's here, I'm actually in shape to score a whole game. What do you think, Mama? I don't want to say it. <laughs> I mean, he thinks he's in his own spring training. Yeah, that's it. He does. You know, oh, I got to work. Out. That's his excuse. That's how it I've only takes work me 12 into days it. to get ready. Oh. There you go. Veteran. Veteran. He's earned the right. How about him showing up to his his uh, spring training debut with a cold, though? 
We want, we want guys coming in best shape of their life. Yeah, but you know what, though? He's actually working. I mean, how many do you see with a cold and not work? So That's true. Kudos no. to you. Yeah, I staying off the that. DL. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been a scratch yesterday. Yeah, we'll all get it later, but yeah, kudos to you. Great job. Sweet. Thanks for the, the cold we're definitely going to get. If you guys get the cold, I'll get to speak more. <laughs> Diaz flies out to right, two away. Oh, the welcome Joe dinner. I had to get out of bed to go to that. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, you had to get out of bed to go out to a nice welcome the, dinner for Joe. The oh, sorry to, There you go. There you go, Joe. Yeah. yeah sorry to inconvenience you, yeah. Oral. <laughs> well, and Mike Levy, our producer, threw it together, so it was very nice, and he was going to pick up the tab, so I got out of bed so for you got that. Out of bed with that. Exactly. To do with me. <laughs> If I'd have known I was going to get the check, I, I'm not sure I would have made it. There's uh, the honesty. See, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, Mike just got in our ear and said he won't have to worry about that in the future. Mm -hmm. Our director, Dustin, had, had a smile on his face, so it was nice to see that. Is that, <laughs> is that rare? <laughs> yeah. I have to get through my laugh before I talk. <laughs> No, it's not rare. It's just nice to see a smile on his face after a whole offseason. Good. Right. Good recovery. Good we'll save. He might be right about only needing 12 days to get into game shape. He's already on fire. Bouncer to second. Mayhart. That's the inning. On to the ninth we go. A 12-5 game in Arizona. And spring training, 12-5 San Diego, on to the ninth inning. We look at our Lexus player of the game. It's John Jay, let off, played center field for the Padres today. Four for four, with four singles. Brought in a run with one of those base hits, scored twice. It's our Lexus player of the game. Trying to earn that starting center fielder job for the Padres. Making a good case for it. Perhaps hit leadoff as well. Here's Chris Hatcher into the game and all. He really finished well last year. He sure did. He came off the DL and remade his mechanics a little bit. And I think it really remade his confidence too because now he actually felt like he knew where the ball was going. He got the ball down, was able to establish low and away and then climb the ladder. When he was struggling, it was more ball one, ball two up and then having to come into the strike zone in a hitter's count. But Showing better mechanics, better repeatability, a sharper breaking ball, and more command. And the Dodgers are hoping he starts off this year like he finished last. At a 131 earned run average after a DL stint for a strained oblique. Opponents hit just 181 against him during that stretch. And that was after he began the season with an ERA above six. Opponents hitting close to 300 against him prior to the injury. Base in the nine hitter, Jose Perella. And bringing a 1 1. Nicely placed, 1 and 2. 
Got his first career save against these Padres on opening day last year with Kenley Jansen still coming back from the foot. But then gave up seven runs over the next two games, did Hatcher. Never fun to give up that many runs early on when there's not enough innings to, to cover that up in the ERA. Those numbers don't look pretty with a small sample size. Yeah, when you come into the game and your ERA is there and you're pitching out of the pen, it's going to take you maybe 18 innings of scoreless ball to just get your ERA down where you can look at it. You've got to put blinders on and just go pitch for pitch, outing for outing. And forget about the results as they equate to your overall statistics. Evaluate yourself on the short term. Barella bounces one over the mound into center for a base hit. You definitely don't get any encouragement when you look up at the scoreboard. When your ERA is up over 7, 8, 18 early on, it can get there, and then you've got to unbury yourself. Size of those scoreboards these days, too, and those video boards that. ADRA is blown up. Yeah, you can't avoid it. No. You can't like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to look at the scoreboard. I'm not going to see. Well, on the road, it's going to be there for sure. At home, sometimes you can have some strategy. I know Bobby Valentine played for Buck Showalter early on in the season. They instructed the scoreboard people not to put up the bad statistics of huh. guys. So they didn't have to have it, have something else maybe from the year before in September had a 1.3 ERA or something positive up there. The Hatchers. For the players. Sorry, sorry. Well, Hatchers. Guys, after his third appearance last year, it was 33-75. Yeah. That ain't fun to look at. No, and it's it's a lot better if you come home and your home score board tells you something positive about what's going on or even just where you grew up and what high school you went to. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, you just or tell yourself they misplaced the decimal point, something like that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, typo. <laughs> Finish for the 3-6-9. A great stretch mm -hmm. after coming back off of the disabled list. There's a great piece. I don't know if you guys saw from Mike Petriello on MLB.com talking about some of the changes that Hatcher made after coming off of the disabled list. He threw before the injury his fastball two thirds of the time. After the injury, threw it only half of the time. Started utilizing the cutter more. Took some speed off of the slider on advice from Rick Honeycutt to get more separation between his hard stuff and the off speed. And saw the results partly because of those changes that he made. You can look at the uh, pitch selection as a, a strategy, or you can look at it as he all of a sudden had some command and could get to the breaking ball because he was ahead in the count. Where before a lot of those fastballs were for he was trying to get back into counts and the fastball was the only thing he thought he had command of. So the pitch the pitch mix is is something that changes with command because you have other weapons you can go to, and that's what he was able to do once they cleaned the mechanics up and what Rick Honeycutt advised him on the uh, taking the speed off is you come out of that bullpen, you know, with your eyes ablazing and breathing fire. And sometimes you got to come out of there with that adrenaline, but understanding still how to pitch, how to add and subtract. Jamil Weeks has had a really nice spring for San Diego. Came into the game today partway through. Corey Spangenberg. Walked his first time up. A strike from Hatcher. He was drafted as a catcher back in 2006. Didn't convert to pitcher until 2011. And as a minor league player, and there were stretches where he was a really good hitter as a catcher. Won a minor league championship with a walk off home run at one point. He made his big league debut while he was a catcher in 2010. Converted to pitcher the following year while he was with the Marlins. It came over in the D Gordon deal before last season. You know, a lot of the conversion guys don't have that depth of experience. You know, pitching since I was eight years old, and you know, you're you're working on something, they can just kind of feel it from their pedigree. So the guys that have been converted 
over like a Pedro Baez, a Chris Hatcher, Ken Lee Jansen even, are still really learning to pitch at the big league level because they have this exceptional tool, which is a great arm. But they're still learning themselves, their bodies, their mechanics, and the pitching mentality. He had pitched in high school, but a lot of the guys that you see in the big leagues did. You know, the best players were pitching in high school. Pitched a little bit in college at UNC Wilmington. And then occasionally would come in to eat innings in the minors late in games. And delivers a strikeout of Weeks. With the first out. The ninth inning. Well, the plane of that fastball right there, the way he can dot it from his high three-quarter delivery now and really extend down the hill. It's just exceptional. The hips open, but the head stays with it. Kind of like Nomar talking about the hitters as they stay on the ball when they're swinging, that you see the front side fly open in the correct timing, but it doesn't jerk the head towards first base as a pitcher. So then they can drive that ball down by the knees. Josh Van Meter takes a strike. The opening of your hips and their shoulders all of a sudden take your head with it. That's poor balance, poor mechanics, but now Chris's head is very stable even though his body is rotating underneath his head, which allows him to finish the pitch. Nomar, even you were a high school pitcher. Were you pretty filthy? Bring some... No. No. I mean, I got... I came in and I closed the games, but it wasn't like I was going, oh, I'm just filthy. I can pitch. I knew my job was at shortstop. Do they play like yeah. Hell's Bells or something when no, you came in no, from short? No, nothing like that. Close the game out? No, they just went, oh, no. <laughs> I really I appreciate his attitude right there. Yeah. You know, that he's actually humble enough to say, yeah. I knew where I belonged. Mm -hmm. You picked the right place. Yeah. It turned out okay for you. You did guy. okay. Did our, thank you. Yeah. Well, really good. Thank you. Yeah. I'd rather beat up on pitchers than be one. Yeah. <laughs> Glad I didn't have to face you very often. How many times did you guys face each other? How's your shin? You say you hit it off my shin. I do not remember you ever hitting the ball off my shin. Did it happen on a backfield while you guys were both uh, getting we, a little we, we both don't okay. remember. We both don't remember facing each other. There are stats in there. There right? are. Yeah, yeah I think like I was one like for one three, for, one for, yeah, one one for four, four, something like that. So, But you don't remember it? I don't remember, sorry. Like I said, on that one, I'm sure it was off his shin. Mm -hmm. I'm really you know, surprised I'm he didn't remember down. facing Second me. baseman was going up the middle. It hit his shin. It bounced where the second baseman oh, was. You I can't remember the at-bats, but you remember it hits my shin. <laughs> Still bruised. Yeah, I'm carrying it with me. Can you autograph it no more? The a shin? Anytime. Yeah. Permanent marker. On a permanent bruise. Be a nice little pitch here, a nice little test for Chris Hatcher. A little delay, get a new ball, rub it up, three and two count, first and second, one out. It's the kind of things you can't simulate when you're doing a side work because you get the ball back from the catcher, you just throw another pitch about ten seconds, five seconds later. There's a rhythm to it, but here it's the mechanics have to be so good that you can wait and make one like that. The good van meter, back to back caves after the back to back singles to begin the inning. A lot, of, a lot of pitching is sometimes like golf, where you, you hit the shot, you wait for somebody else to do something, you walk up to your ball, you pull a club out, and then you, you do it again. You don't get a lot of practice swings out there. You, you've got to waggle when you stand on the rubber, but that's about it. But there's, there's time in between. And I always encourage young pitchers to do that same thing when they're warming up for a game, when they're in their side works practicing, to try and pick that same rhythm that they're going to pitch in the game with. No more fielders like it when you get into a bit of a rhythm, right? And you're working quickly. Yeah, like throwing strikes and work fast. The fastest workers on the mound are usually throwing the ball, see what happens, and they are backing up towards the rubber as the ball's in the air from the catcher. If you watch the fast workers around the big leagues. Nice pitch, showing two. But his split finger, when he stays through with his mechanics and gets his hand out front, it just absolutely disappears. Because you're talking about, you know, 95 to 97 mile an hour arm speed. And now you're talking an off-speed grip where he's getting the same extension and acceleration with the fastball. But instead of the ball getting the velocity, the grip makes the ball spin and has it dive. 
And with a fastball missed off the outer and it's one and two. Ninth inning in a 12-5 game, but all Padres in this one. Hatcher brings a one-two and blows the fastball by him to strike out the side here in the ninth. It's the little things in these spring training games. The silver lining is a nice performance for Chris Hatcher. Dodgers with 12 runs on 22 hits today. Dodgers with five on nine base hits. Yeah, the sixth Padres pitcher of the day. You see up there on the video board, Jake or Jose Dominguez comes in. It's been last year at AAA with an ERA above six. Trying to improve on those numbers here this year. We'll face off with two, three, and four in the Dodgers order. Jose Dominguez, he will face Jack Murphy, who stroked a single to right field in his last bat. And what a pleasure for these young kids playing at the end of the game to get more than one at bat. Look at that. That's, that's, wow. that's the picture we were talking about. The media guide up on the board. I mean, seriously. What decade did he take, take that in? I mean, he has to be in the top for the mustache and hair coming into spring for the for the Dodgers. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah. It's great that he's grown the uh, mustache and friends down on his chin, too, since that picture was taken. Look at that. Strong. Even stronger if he gets a hit here and goes two for two today. I mean, that had to take some work, don't you think? The mustache? And the hair. Yeah. Commitment. Get in there. Get Loved it third. Yeah, we'll throw him out. In my day, that length hair was called salad. Huh. I don't know what it'd be called now. Just... Long hair. Long hair. Long hair don't care. Salad. Look at the salad on that guy. Mm -hmm. Here's Brendan Davis. He doubled his last time. He's only 18 years old. Yeah, pulled a double to bring in Murphy. Up there swinging. Strike one. Can bet when he gets to the big leagues, he's going to be a little heavier. He'll start to fill out. Got a live body, though. Out of Lakewood, California. He's a Dodgers fifth round pick last year. He's getting a healthy cut. Another than two. That's quite a jump. It's like you know, Mar almost. 
First year in this year. First year in camp. Fifth round pick last year. That's the June draft. Yep. Half a season of minor league ball, and here he is getting at bats in the big league stadium in spring training. It was 17 last year, guys, when he made his pro debut. Played in the Pioneer League. He's got some bat speed. I was in camp. I didn't get in that. My first one, I wasn't in the game, but I was at big league camp. Well, I was with the big league coaches because my first camp was when they were had the replacement players oh, at spring training. All right. So my first camp was at the big league field with the coaches, but I didn't get in any game that year. They didn't want to put you in any game no. because they didn't want you to have any ill feelings from the big leaguers that were out right. on the labor strife. Yeah, and, and, right. I would, and I wouldn't, even when they were talking about, oh, you can, it's okay to play in these. I'm like, nope. No, You're, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't want to be referred nope. to as what came known as scabs. Yep. Right? Exactly right. So it was the next year when I got that spring training mm -hmm. big league game. Well, even more important on the evaluation of how good you were and how good you became, you were competing against big leaguers and got the game. <laughs> oh, man. How about this kid? That ball is crushed. The deep center. Extra bases for Brendan Davis. His second double in the late innings today. Have a day, 18-year-old kid here in a big league game. Ball on the inner half. We saw the swing you were talking about. Oh, you liked it. He has a quick bat, stays on the ball, driving it, showing off some power. You're talking about, gosh, just 18. That body will fill out. That's a live, wiry body. And you look at the stride. It's like a newborn deer. You know, there's some hitch in his giddy up there. But when he puts on some muscle and a little more coordination, he's going to fly. And now Adam Law sends a fly ball to center. Davis tags and holds. Two gone in the ninth inning. Dodgers and Mariners tomorrow. Dodgers and Indians on Tuesday. Charlie Steiner slides over to TV, joins Oral and Alana for that one. For the off day on Wednesday. Spencer Navin, last hope for the Dodgers. like this where the wins and losses in spring don't matter. The glass half full approach is that a lot of these young guys who don't even have the names on their jerseys are getting these opportunities to come in playing Cactus League games. Some of them take nice advantage of it like Brendan Davis with his two doubles. Foul ground first base side. Noonan has room and brings an end to this one. That was dominated by the Padres. For the big story today, Mike Holsinger scratched from the start with some abdominal tightness. Hoping it's no big deal. He's already spoken to the media and said that he hopes it's no big deal. He'll rest and he hopes not too long from now. Be back in it, chasing down that number five spot in the rotation. 12-5 final score from Camelback Ranch for Nomar and Oral on Alana Rizzo. And the rest of our crew, Joe Davis saying so long from Glendale. Talk to you soon.